Just let your soul glow. Just let it shine through. <laughs> Just let your soul glow. Feel it all so silky smooth. Just let it shine through. <laughs> yeah, hang on, guys. I'm just like singing to pass the time while I do a little sum sum. Uh, okay. Uh, da, da, da. Shit, that's not what I meant to click on. All right. Fuck. All right, OBS, what the fuck did you just do? Oh, I hate it when it does that. Anyway, what's up everybody? Welcome to the 50th, 50th night of cringe. I know you probably expected that like that AI, uh, that AI picture gimmick that I was talking about. I will eventually do that, I swear. But it always comes up at the most uh, inconvenient time, uh, the time when I don't have any money and I've already paid all my bills. You know, every single goddamn time. And it's it, like, the it's, thing is, it's cheap, but still, like, like I would have no money. Fucking none. <laughs> none to spend on the whole AI uh, uh, thing for the next NOC. Well, it wouldn't be NOC. It would be, uh, like I said, uh, a Q&A slash you guys give me like prompts to put in like the AI art simulator. But anyway, yeah. But today we're just gonna be talking about cringy TikToks. I haven't done that in a while, so I was like, fuck it. Let's do it again. There's so much shit I've missed. There's so many people, I'm so jealous of other people. Everyone else is talking about like these awful TikToks. And I'm just, you know, I I just, I haven't dipped into it yet. Awkward 101, $2 super chat. Oh, look, it's got little, um, little snowflakes. Love you, Jay, heart emoji. Love you too. Uh, Red Rose Spark, I was born yesterday, 22 years ago. Happy, well, late birthday. Welcome to the chat. Oh yeah, did you guys hear that uh, Henry Cavill will no longer be Superman? I had to learn that right before the stream. <laughs> I'm a little verklempt. I mean, it's not that big of a deal because he's he's already got a bunch of fucking projects set up. It's not like he's broke. It's not like he's in dire straits. He'll be all right. He's got a couple movies, couple like he's good. He's good. But at the same time, it's like, oh, I don't want another Superman origin story movie. <laughs> Kyle R. He's free to be James Bond now, though. Uh, I don't think he's gonna be James Bond though, because I think someone else. It was announced someone else is in the running or some shit. And it's not even a good enough actor, which is another thing I can't I can't stand about that. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, oh, Miss Midnight, if that was my nurse in the ICU, I'd ask for a DNR or <laughs> Dr. Dipshits in House of Memes, ten dollar super chat. Dear Miss Longbone, you've been found guilty of violating the dangerously based act. <laughs> And uh, but in all seriousness, been loving the content, especially She Hulk and Interview with the Vampire. Keep keep them coming. Kiss kiss. Thank you and kiss kiss back to you. I'm gonna get uh, some sh more She Hulk shit out. By the way, I think I got two more reactions. I'm skipping episode six. I think I've said this already because that's just a nothing episode. I'm gonna do like a little summary of episode six in my um, episode seven reaction because it's just it's just such a nothing fucking episode. I'm not even gonna waste my time. Um, I'm going to do, but I am going to do episodes seven and eight because I got, I got to cover the Matt Murdock shit. It's just, it's irresponsible not to. The ball says She-Hulk was canceled. Uh, I think that was just like a video game thing, wasn't it? Like they just said they canceled the plans of putting, I mean, it's, it is the character from the show, but they were going to introduce her into a video game and they decided against it. And which is a bad sign because they, um, 
the reason they would put her in the game in the first place is because there was so much there's so much hype behind the show and people like the show. So naturally, yeah, they would put her in the game in one of the games, in one of the Marvel games. But the fact that they're not now and they're canceling it means yeah, it's not not a good sign. It means nobody was watching the show, which we already know. We knew that already. Uh, Mitchell, Mitchell, pa 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 ah, Pape, oh my God, I'm sorry for, uh, for uh, butchering that. Her and Carl's reactions to interview the vampire are hilarious. I will relay that message to Carl if, if he isn't already in the chat lurking. <laughs> but thank you, Wolfsbane, 499 Super Chat. Hey, Jay, did you see across the Spider-Verse trailer? It didn't show it in the trailer, but the race swapped Spider-Woman is five months pregnant. <laughs> isn't that a combination of like two different fucking characters? That's what I heard. Yes, the pregnant Spider Woman com comic I saw a while back. I didn't read it, but I just saw. A little bit. And then someone said they ripped off the style from Misty Knight. <laughs> like, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> from what I heard, they were on the right track with the first movie. Now it seems like they're going into, you know, ruining shit, uh, which I'm not surprised by. Evil Hero Diamond Cat, $5 Super Chat. Why don't you ever talk about Shadowverse? What are your thoughts on uh, Cross? Oh, thanks, OBS. What the fuck? Yeah, my OBS just acted up for a second. It disconnected and connected for us for a split second. What the fuck? What the fuck, YouTube or my internet provider? <laughs> That's weird. Did you finish my super chat? I read the whole thing. <laughs> I read the whole, th I read your shadow verse <laughs> gripes again. Um, oh God. Uh, like, yeah. Oh yeah. Like I was saying, it's, it's, it's unless you're super powered and you have, you're indestructible. Like that's, yes. Yeah, uh, miscarriage waiting to happen. Yeah, like I said, let me get to this. We're going to be talking about very cringe TikToks, and uh, I want to thank the channel who's bra who is a much bra a much bra braver person than I am making compilations of cringe TikToks. I want to thank this person for all the entertainment we're about to receive. I think his name is Rob is right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank God to the people who make these compilations. Cause, cause I was not going to get back on the TikTok app. Fuck that. No, <laughs> just look for compilations. And like what, what's great is I think he does it like weekly, I think. Like he comes up with like weekly compilations for these. So this is great. This is great. Anyway, let's get to it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I hate this song. <laughs> I hate this fucking song. Oh God, Arturo Vegas. Thank you. And it's got the little doggy. Thank you. Wolf Spain 499 Super Chat. They pulled a Black Canary in the Harley Quinn movie. They took most of Vixen's design and gave it to BC, who was also race swapped. Ah, it's the evil world we live in. <laughs> CEO of uh, Joey Joster. I always read his whole name when I only need to read Joey Joster. Joey Joster, five dollars super chat. Hey, Miss Longbone, how's it going? Are you gonna do a part three of Validate? The last one was hilarious. We'll see about that. I don't know. Uh, but I'm gonna see if I can get me and the guys together for a um, a woman and king commentary video. Because that needs that that just needs to happen. <laughs> I already did I already did like a four hour fucking recording with Carl, but it's like it's so much of Carl like talking that I don't even know how the fuck I'm gonna get through that. <laughs> Like editing wise. Okay, hang on a sec. Someone says something's muted. Uh, da, da, da. Hang on a sec. Okay, now okay. I think it's fine now. Someone said something about like uh Chrome being muted. I fixed it though. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm going to see if I can do, yeah, an official, uh, woman King commentary with me and the guys. Uh, I don't know when we're, when we're going to record it. Maybe, hopefully this Sunday. I don't know when they're all, when they're all available at the same time. And I kind of want to get it out by Christmas. 
<laughs> making a special a special Christmas episode of us making the most racist fucking jokes. <laughs> uh, Evil Hero Diamond Cat two dollars super chat thoughts on Yugo Asuma's graduation. Oh, Evil Hero Diamond Cat oh, Officer Bud Tadrestel five dollars super chat. So Marvel made a single black woman who doesn't care if her baby gets in the way of her getting some action. <laughs> A parent. See, that's what I'm saying. It's like you cannot be fucking woke and do shit like that at the same time. You cannot, pro- you cannot loud yourself and present yourself as the most inclusive woke person, and then do some shit like that, and then, and then not have someone like me turn around and be like, well, okay, but why you turned her black and she's sing- a single mother <laughs> who doesn't give a fuck. About the well-being of her unborn child. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> that just looks suspect. Why did you do that? Someone's saying I'm out of sync, which is... Uh, am I? Is, can anyone... Can anyone see if I'm out of sync or not? Because it doesn't make sense to me. Because my audio is set to where it should be out of sync. Apparently I have lag. Oh, Mackie Skyfire, the super chat, YouTube rewind time. What's your favorite video this year uh, that you did, Jay Longbone? Mine was your Amber Heard trial. Uh, Merry and Merry Christmas, everyone. Uh, I don't know what what my favorite one is. Bailey Lenore, you pe- you appear to be in sync to me. You're fine. People people are saying I'm fine. I think it might be a problem on your end. I don't know, because yeah, uh, it should it should be fine because how everything I got, however how I have everything set up. But anyway, let's get let's get back to this. Damn, I talk a lot. Yeah. Ohio plastic surgeon just had her medical license suspended after allegations of botch surgeries and privacy concerns. If your doctor is a TikTok star, you should probably find a new one. One hundred percent. Yes, yes. It's like. Go into a fucking used car salesman <laughs> or like get, go, getting a lawyer who advertises on a park bench. It's like you get what you fucking pay for. Like, I do feel sorry for you on some level, but uh, like if you get botched, but at the same time, it's like, damn, why the fuck would you do that? <laughs> why did you do that? People keep saying I'm out of sync. What the fuck? I don't know what it could be. Or it could be that my hard, no, can't be that. Or it could be my audio thing, because I did set my audio in a certain way uh, a couple days ago, but I don't know if I can change it now. Some people are saying it's in sync on their end. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to tell you. I gotta keep pausing it because there is, that sounds like copyrighted audio. Good morning, TikTok. But yeah, that's, like I said, what are you doing? Looking for fucking doctors on TikTok. That's crazy. That's crazy. You, know, you know why I think it's out of sync sometimes? I keep switching over uh, from OBS to my browser, and I think that's the problem. The fuck? happening oh it keeps going in and out for some reason okay okay that should have done something I have no idea why OBS kept going in and out. It was weird. Could be my internet, could be that, I don't know. But let's continue. This doesn't look promising right here. Uh-huh. White people who don't think Brittany Griner, Grinner, I don't know, a trade deal was a, was good, are saltine settlers and racists. Okay, wait, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't work. You're not like even it doesn't even work for the white girls who do it, but it definitely doesn't work for you. 
the whole like quirky like I'm I'm laugh I'm laughing through my insanity. It it doesn't work. Stop doing it. None of you, none of y'all are good at it. <laughs> because half the time it's not even ironic. You you literally are just insane. Yeah, I've been looking <laughs> at these comments on my post from yesterday about Brittany Griner. And I am so tired of these saltine motherfucking settlers. <laughs> these saltine motherfucking settlers. Slurs against white people are so fucking lame. <laughs> They're so goddamn lame. Ugh. Saltine cracker like cracker is like, like i said they're mostly just funny it's like you can't come up with any better ones than that like they all sound funny and they're all food based coming on my post with their bullshit rhetoric not but racism okay if you got left behind and black people in this country have gotten the short end of the stick for long enough when are y'all saltines gonna realize that we like motherfucking graham crackers over here <laughs> what are you saltines gonna realize we like crab crackers over here like i love how this level like this tier of black woman is just so outdated now <laughs> this shit used to be like i would nah, it wasn't accepted back in the day because like that shit was made fun of too uh but like it's just so outdated like you cannot be on tiktok and try to make a serious statement talking like this you just can't <laughs> the fuck you don't like britney Griner? like uh, like wh why do you even care about this shit <laughs> fucking stupid oh yeah the looters the looters this is the type of shit that just makes you pray for a goddamn punisher to just show up <laughs> Like, where's the Punisher when you need him? He just walks in and is like, put that shit down. <laughs> and then flashes his shotgun and then it's over. Ugh. Anyway, uh, Dr. Dipshit's House of Memes, $2 Super Chat, Salting Settlers colonized the tomato soup islands. <laughs> uh, Danny K. Music, can't have shit in LA. Uh, yeah. You can't. Mm. Mm. Oh shit, that's a random name. A Punisher or a cop? What's the difference? Hey -o! I think mean, a lot of woke people would not agree with that sen sentiments. For some reason they think the Punisher, oh, he would never do what a cop does even though he does way worse than what a cop does. Like, like the fangirls on Twitter who stand for uh, the Netflix uh, Punisher TV show, they, they genuinely think that Frank Castle is better than the cops, morally. <laughs> and I'm like, what? You know he does a lot worse than them, right? Like, oh, does Fra Frank Castle would hate the cops? No, he wouldn't. You don't know this character from a can of paint. Like, Jesus Christ, you were an idiot. Uh, the CEO of Racism, $10 Super Chat. Congrats on 50. Got my bio freeze ready for the cringe cramps. Let's go. Oh, uh, Wolfsbane, I think you missed my Henry Cavill super chat. That might have been when shit was fucking up. Hang on, hang on. Let me see if I can find it. There we go. Wolfsbane 499 super chat. Speaking of Henry Cavill, I just rewatched your Henry Cavill builds a computer reaction. Word of advice spray bottle. <laughs> Mr. Orc Shaman, the Punisher once race changed, as in Frank Castle actually having surgery to make him black. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that shit. And then he teamed up with, uh, what's his name? Uh, Luke Cage. <clears throat> Excuse me, that was funny. Oh, look at these motherfuckers. Like, I just want one, like, just one crazed vigilante to come, come around. You ain't got, you don't have to have a gun. You can have a bat, a cricket bat, <laughs> regular bat, just something, anything, anybody getting off their ass. I'd say, fuck it, risk, risk the lawsuit. You, they walking out of there with the shit already anyway. 
It's not like you following black kids around the store because you think they'll steal something. No, they're literally walking out of the fucking store with shit. At this point, you might as well just crow take a crowbar to their fucking knees. Just do it. This is San Francisco, but they're more worried about Twitter employees taking naps on sofas at work. Oh yeah, I remember that. There was this article talking about how, oh, Elon Musk, like, why is there comforts for your employees? Why are there beds and couches here? Meanwhile, in San, yeah, in San Francisco, they're just like, homeless are just like displayed out everywhere. The thing is, I hope the people who film this shit aren't just filming it and leaving. I hope they actually, you know, maybe give some of these motherfuckers money for food or some shit. Just saying, don't just go around filming this shit and leaving. If you want to bring awareness, you need to do some awareness too, motherfucker. Like that's all I'm saying. And one of them has a dog, you know, like, please tell me. You were giving them money for food, at least for the fucking dog. Yeah. Bailey, Lenore, why do people live in LA? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I think people just end up there from bad luck. So we now know that trauma, like, just makes- Teacher says we should have lower expectations for black students. Oh Lord. Because they're suffering trauma and PTSD from systematic racism. <laughs> almost infinitely harder to learn when you're a child. And we also now know that systemic racism is essentially an adverse childhood experience. And many researchers qualify systemic racism as an adverse childhood experience. <laughs> Wait, who did that? Racism qualify an adverse childhood experience. And many researchers Name these researchers. <laughs> what, what fucking researchers? Oh, like, oh, because yeah, I'm sure five-year-olds are going around and then being called jungle bunnies and shit at a very, at that young age. Like they're so traumatized from racism at the age of five that they can't learn and can't be educated. <laughs> like, do these bitches fucking hear themselves? Like, it, it, it reminds me, yeah, it reminds me of this fucking mad TV skit from a while back. Uh, the nice white lady skit. <laughs> like the crusty old principal who's so against the white lady's attempt at, you know, breaking through to these little ghetto bunnies. <laughs> like he doesn't, he like, oh, these are minor. He says, <laughs> these are minorities. They can't learn and they can't be educated. <laughs> she's basically saying that, but she's saying the nice version of it. Yeah, they can't learn, they can't be educated because of system systemic racism and, you know, the PTSD from that. Like, there's no, there's literally, the only difference between a, like, a actual, like, fucking racist and a racist liberal person is the tone. That's it. The fucking tone. The tone they use. That's it. That's, that's, that's it. <laughs> Qualify systemic racism as an adverse childhood. You know what it is? This bitch is probably maybe a teacher, teacher's assistant, and some black kids probably harassed her. <laughs> like the like the two rambunctious black kids in the class. Probably like, shut up, bitch. <laughs> bitch. And the real emphasis on the bitch. <laughs> Cause I used to know those kids in, uh, back when I was going to school. Like, shut up, white bitch. <laughs> Just to like, um, of course, like, you know, trying to intimidate her because like, she's a little, probably the little white lady at the school or whatever. And instead of like being like, oh, like maybe holding them accountable for their fucking behavior. She was like, oh, this is of course, apparently, of course, this is because due to systemic racism, because she can't go online and complain about these fucking kids, about these uh, black kids getting on her fucking nerves. She's got it. So she's got to come at it at an angle of, um, what do you call it? Um, empathy, like, em like an empathetic angle on it. 
Yeah, because yeah, you can't you can't do that. That's mean. You can't come out and just say these little these little black bastards. <laughs> these little urban bastards. Yeah, they, she can't do that. Um, I'm not saying that she should call them like little ashy little ne these little ashy little negroes is harassing me in my class. No, but she can't even like even make a complaint that these kids are rambunctious. They're bothering me because then they someone finds out what school she uh, she teaches at because you know people are that fucking nosy. They're gonna be like, oh, she, oh, she doesn't like black kids. That's what it is because people are that fucking shitty. That's just a hunch, though. This is a scenario. Just I'm speculating. Other experience, which means that children who are black and brown in our schools are expected to be excellent while suffering from complex PTSD. <laughs> They're suffering from PTSD. Yeah, I'm sorry. Kids like young today, like no. I don't think so. Like, get the fight. What? What? Are you, which one of your students told you that bullshit? <laughs> which one? Of the, which one of your shitty students, or which one of their parents told told you that shit? <clears throat> oh, excuse me. The racism of low expectations strikes again. And on top of that, we're also expecting these students to be excellent in a space that is actively hostile to them, their way of being who they are as people, their history, their ancestors, everything. Um, the big gender affirming hormone therapy, gah, therapy, life-saving treatment, uh-huh, multidisciplinary, individualized care, clearly explain expectations, and infertility concerns, appropriate, so that, and then we have a tweet from uh, Lips of TikTok saying, for kids who go on a blocker, for kids who go on a blocker, then they add in gender affirming hormone therapy. These kids probably will be infertile. Oh yeah. Big thing is here the infertility concern. Oh, okay. This is a Zoom call. I didn't notice that shit at the side of the screen. It's a Zoom call, and they're talking about gender affirming hormone therapy with um, starting gender affirming hormone therapy. So for kids who go on a blocker at Tanner Stage Two. And then they add in gender affirming hormone therapy. Um, there isn't a lot of research about this. And there should be. So, like, why, why? If there isn't a lot of research on it, why the fuck were you even talking about it? About it, administering it to children if it hasn't been fully researched? Albatross fight out super chat. So all non white students are just living in sheer agony and pain 24 7. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, totally. This is totally a real thing. <laughs> out there but what we do know is these kids probably will be infertile um so it's really crucial to have multiple conversations with the family about that <laughs> and to talk about options around that to talk about different ways people can have kids um aside from <laughs> biological kids um, I, okay you gotta tell me yeah your kids gonna be hollowed out like how uh, your kids gonna be hollowed out like a jack-o-lantern or let's like completely just like, <laughs> like just completely dead from the waist down. All right. So we got to just tell him like, hey, look, you little bastard, you can adopt. <laughs> you can adopt. Like, you know how fucking dangerous it is to like convince kids like before they're, they're even mature enough to understand sexuality, family, marriage, uh, parenting and all that shit. The, hey, you can just adopt whatever. You know, um, having a kid that looks like you and you want the same DNA, like you want to share the same DNA and all that, that's not important. Just fucking adopt. <laughs> Just fucking do it. The fact that you are, like I said, you, that you've gotten your insides basically uh, ripped up and shredded up and you can't procreate. Don't let, I mean, come on. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> It's not that big a deal. Get over it. Talk about possible ways. There's some early research being done on sperm and egg banking um, prior to going on gender affirming hormone therapy. So to, to talk about that, and I think this is one of the trickiest parts about gender affirming hormone therapy is talking with these youth and their families about these youth. fertility concerns, um, but obviously incredibly important to do. Um, 
lastly, it's really important to talk. Because listen to what, listen to what she's saying, right? She said, like, let them know of the risks, which is okay, fine. But then you go on and say, tell them they can adopt. <laughs> which is mean you still, which means you're still trying to like ease them into the shit anyway. But hey, look, no, because no fucking doctor says like, uh, like I'm telling you, like this is a hundred percent, like this is like a 90% chance that you could fucking die. But hey, guess what? Hey, you be a good looking fucking corpse when you done, nigga. <laughs> so get this shit done. I need a new BMW, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Get this shit done. Yeah, okay, you could fucking die. But guess what? You gonna be dead and dead. <laughs> okay, you could not have children ever. You could be completely st stuck like behind puberty for the rest of your fucking life and have major health issues. But guess what? You gonna look like a twink on TikTok, yo. <laughs> Not yet. Ugh. Yeesh. Talk about appropriate sex ed. Hi, I'm Jack. My pronouns are they, them, and I identify as trans and non-binary. Oh, Jesus Christ. Is, it does not cancel, cancel each other out. I have no gender. I'm non-binary, but I'm also transitioning into the other gender. What? <laughs> does that make any goddamn sense? Does it make any sense? Here are three things you can do to support trans children in your school. Don't. <laughs> Be a visible trans ally. There are lots of ways to do this. From having trans- What is up with them nails, fam? <laughs> that is some creepy shit. <laughs> because he's got these like pale vampire hands. <laughs> and inclusive flags in your classroom, to having trans inclusive storybooks on your bookshelves. Number two, stop unnecessarily gendering things in your school. This ranges from easy changes, like not grouping children into boys and girls. Well, we have girls bathrooms and boys bathrooms, unless you want them all to go to the same bathroom, which I would advise against. Uh, yeah, we, we do need to gender some things. I mean, it's fine. Considering the fact that girls and boys are treated differently, uh, in terms of how they're being taught in schools. I mean, I mean, technically, yeah, we do need to get out of that, out of gendering how we treat children in terms of like, uh, like behavioral problems and shit. But uh, yeah, some things need to be gendered in school, you know, as a precaution, the saying. To not having gendered uniforms. Consider how excluded trans and especially non-binary children and staff may feel about gendered spaces and policies. They wouldn't. Like, kids don't give a fucking shit. <laughs> oh, gendered uniforms. The only thing kids care about in terms of uniforms is the fact that they need to wear them. <laughs> At all. They don't give it. It's gendered, mom. Like, no, they don't want to wear that plaid, that ugly plaid shit because it's ugly pl plaid shit. Oh, it's gendered, like, mm. And plus, like, if you're a trans kid and you hate uniforms that are gendered, why the fuck are you even going to a school that requires uniforms? Dr. Dipshits, not implying that there are such things as trans children, but <laughs> I'm just saying, Dr. Dr. Dipshits, house of memes, to all the super chat, be a Muslim ally, bring them up to the roof. <laughs> bring them up to the roof, Jesus. And number three, teach children about pronouns, what they are, how we use them, and why they're important. No, that's for you, not for the kid. I said this before, I think I've said this before on stream. These types of fucking people who wanna like push this shit on the kids, especially like younger and younger, are just doing it because they are miserable, friendless, lonely, and because no adult wants to fucking validate this bullshit. They all like other adults around them think they're fucking weird. Don't want to fuck with them for whatever reason. Pro they're probably because they're very unlikable in real life. But, but guess who will validate their fucking feelings? Children, because they don't give a fuck. They will love you unconditionally, unconditionally. And half these people are the same fucking people who say, you don't have to have kids. You don't have to have kids. You don't have to have families, but will get in your fucking kid's face. And be like, come on, love me. I'm your, I'm your dad too. 
I'm your teacher and I love you. Like, no, have your own fucking kids, you weirdo. Have your own fucking kids. Leave these fucking kids alone. But like, yeah, they don't, they don't hang around. They, the adults they hang around with probably don't like them. And these people are fucking miserable as shit and won't need someone to validate them. That's the only reason they, these people like this become teachers. Because y'all sure, sure as hell ain't teaching shit. <laughs> like, where, where's the math? Where's the science and shit? All y'all talk about is fucking pronouns. <laughs> The CEO of racism, $2 super chat, no gender language, no Spanish children may speak. <laughs> uh, Mr. Orc Shaman, I'm British. We hate motherfuckers like these, <laughs> these days too. <so. clears throat> Excuse me. I mean, yeah, I mean, who would deal with someone this fucking obnoxious? You wouldn't, but uh, they can get validation from children. And these, like I said, this is the same group of people who will be like, well, you don't need to have your own kids. Why do we need to have kids? I don't want to have kids. <laughs> but they will become teachers just to get close to your kids to fill up their heads with all their fucking ideas and shit. It's like, like they have parental, uh, they have parental what the fuck, instincts, but it's all fucked up because they're such miserable assholes. <laughs> And instead of like, like I said, having their own kids and doing their own thing and connecting with people in order to like build fa a family type scenario, like they just, yeah, let's, I'm just going to become a, become a teacher and be up in your fucking kid's face. <laughs> be trans with me, please. No one else will. Oh, Major Chris, $10 super chat. I love how these snowflakes claim they want to do away with labels, but they're constantly making new labels just to feel special hypocrites. Also, Merry Early Christmas, Jay. Enjoy your holiday. Oh, thank you. And Merry Christmas to you too. This allows trans people to not be singled out for their pronouns and instead makes pronouns part of the norm. No, <laughs> like I said, it's for your benefit, not the kids. It's for you. It's for you. Like I said, that's why they're doing it with kids because people in life will be like, oh, I'm Z's. You'll say some shit like I'm Z's and they're like, no, you're not. Uh, he, anyway. <laughs> like, yeah, cause only kids would listen to this shit. Only fucking children would care about this shit because you can manipulate them into caring about it. It's very easy. You have no, like I said, I said this before, you have no idea how easy it is to convince a child to do something that you want them to do. All you gotta do is give them some attention, some val validation, just like these motherfuckers, because they're basically children themselves. Give them some validation, make, th make them think they're having fun doing something. And then like, yeah, boom, you got them. You fucking got them. Pixie 499 Super Chat in my sex ed, uh, we weren't allowed to use male, female official tests, uh, use AFAB, uh, AMAB. It was totally degendered. We had dildo demonstrations too. Jesus fuck. How old are you? Like, you must be young because this is like some newish shit. The happiest gaming, $5 super chat. Did you hear the Cambridge dictionary changed the definition of woman? Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. That's gonna be too, I'm not looking that shit up. It's, it's gonna be too, too depressing. Miss Midnight, I'll never acknowledge the terms AFAB, AMAB. <laughs> yeah, neither will I. Ugh. 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 I know that I'm probably going to get ate up by this in the comment sections, but I really. Fat, pho fat liberation activist says eating disorders are rooted in fat phobia. Also, she says, get <laughs> girl, you're just inviting roasts. She said, like, in the same video, this fat chick is talking about fat liberation. She says, I'm going to get ate up by this. <laughs> Why would you say that? <sighs> Why the fuck would you say that? I don't care because it's the truth. And a lot of, a lot I will also, I'm whispering so my husband doesn't beat me. See the hijab on her head. <laughs> Why are you whispering? Like I said, it's all jokes here. It's all fun and games. A lot of y'all need to admit to yourselves that restrictive um eating disorders are fat phobic like y'all did um and a lot of, a lot of y'all need to admit to yourselves that restrictive um eating disorders are fat phobic
What the hell does that mean? She's got rest restrictive eating disorders. I mean, eating disorders are inherently like restrictive. Like, are you saying, like, oh, like if you restrict someone's eating disorder, that's fat phobic. Cause like, what are you saying? Some, some of y'all motherfuckers just be adding extra words to shit. Like y'all really be coming up on social media or just in real life talking about everybody's body is beautiful while being on your third day not eating. Um, hat bitch, how do you know that? How do you know everybody's fucking bitch? How do you know? Yeah, some thin chick complimented you on how fucking big you are. <laughs> because really, they, 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 they're humoring you. Or low-key making fun of you. But either way. Uh, yeah, but how do you know they're having, they have an eating disorder? Uh, someone who has an eating disorder cannot fully, like, gouge, uh, someone else's eating habits because you also have an eating disorder. You have also have an eating disorder. You also have it. <laughs> like that doesn't make no sense. If everybody's body is beautiful, how come yours isn't? How come fat people isn't? Cause what you're is being fat. You're scared of being fat. You think fat people are disgusting. You think fat people are ugly and you don't want to be fat. So you restrict yourself from eating because you think fat people are disgusting and don't deserve to live. So, like y'all will legitimately feel like you want to end your life because you don't want to be fat. Uh, you see, who the fuck are you talking about? Cause I know she just, cause I know damn well she's just talking about skinny chicks. She's just talking about chicks who are skinny. That's all she's doing. Uh, because she, you can't, I know you ain't talking about no anorexic people cause you're basically mocking people with serious, like like serious disease diseases you're you're mocking people with a mental disorder and like not even like not even like in a like in a funny way like you literally are denigrating those people because you are insecure about being fat like what the fuck okay pixie 499 super chat junior for context uh all the Genitalia posters had sticky notes that covered the female uh, male with AFAB or AMAB, and we were tested on 10 plus sexualities. Like, oh God, how, how fucking old are you? <laughs> like, I didn't, like, not as an, like, not mean that as an insult, but like, I'm genuinely asking. Like, what grade are you in? That doesn't seem fat phobic to you. It doesn't? Like you, anore you stupid anorexics, you're fat phobic. Like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? I don't think you thought this through. I'm gonna say some stuff that's gonna. Your brain is mayonnaise, sweetie. It's man. <laughs> wait, oh wait, this one. White cis men are terrorists and a threat to the country. Um, I hope you're not a white cis man because. Ruffle some feathers. It may even evoke anger out of some of you. But also, your eyes are dead. Like you were this close to being a school shooter just just going off your eyes but if it does evoke anger it's because it's the truth and why do you have the, the camera downcast no one wants to look up your fucking nose so or inside your mouth that far like please put the camera like like come on either higher than you or centered like come on sit the fuck down and put the shoe on cinderella because here we go <laughs> Niggas like this corny as hell. <laughs> Anger, it's because it's the truth. So sit the fuck down and put the shoe on, Cinderella, because here we go. So, so if you say, so if you say something that invokes invokes anger, if you if you say something and it invokes anger, that means it's the truth. So if I call you like a little uh, soy made bitch, that means it's the truth, right? <laughs> Well, it kind of is the truth, but I'm just saying you would fight back against that. Uh, that what that what I'm saying, like it's not the truth, because it might not be the truth. Who knows? Might just be some bullshit. But it's like what? Just because? Oh well, if you're mad by it, it's clearly the truth. Like it's not how that works, sweetie. It's not how that works at all. Uh, Danny K Music, five dollars super chat. Love your content and happy fiftieth NOC. Still burst my sides. Seeing your kneading bread tutorial gag from your old SVU video. Oh, dang, you you were here from jump, unless you found it before it got blocked by NBC, the bastards. Uh, keep up the laughs. Thank you, Danny K. 
Michael Carrion, $5 Super Chat. Have you heard of Kathy Rummer, the butcher of Ardmore? She makes TikToks about perform about her performing GRS on children on ch- on children and calls the procedure T this the latest. Yeah, I've heard of that. I think there's like a, a TikTok about that coming up in this compilation, I think, from what I saw when I scanned through it. Kiman, two pound super chat. This man looks naturally photoshopped. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a pancake face. Like he's like he's wearing pancake makeup or he's got a filter on. Kevin, uh, Kelvin Thompson, my super chat got missed. Did it? Damn it. So, oh, there we go. There we go. Kelvin Thompson, uh, $2 super chat. Merry Christmas, Jay. Favorite bad Christmas movie. Hmm, favorite bad Christmas movie. I would say Jingle All the Way, but I don't consider that a bad movie. <laughs> I consider that a perfectly decent Christmas film. I mean, it's silly as hell, but like, it's supposed to be silly. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to be comedic. Like all like the comedic beats they hit, they they fucking hit them. So I can't even say it's a bad movie. I mean, technically maybe you could call it that a bad movie, but I don't know. But I'm just gonna say that just for now. Jingle all the way. I was so upset, not upset, but I was so, like, oh, I was like, oh, I missed out on doing a, um, like a jingle all the way EFAP with, you know, with the EFAP guys. Cause I love like, that's That movie's a staple in my household, watching jingle all the way during Christmas. And I was like, oh, I wanted to make fun of it with EFAP. God damn it. <laughs> but anyway, let, let's get back to it. If you look at the culprits from most of the school shootings, most of the church shootings, most of the, he does the Bucky Beaver thing with his teeth, like school shootings. School shootings. <laughs> oh God! It's like he wants a piece of Gouda to go with his uh, self righteousness. Oh. Also, you're wearing an Adidas cap. They're anti-Semitic, didn't you hear? Things. Mo- why? Why are you wearing that? And your eyes are still scary. <laughs> also, the attacks against the LGBT and minority groups. Also, he said most school shooters. Or most shoot uh, mass shooters or fucking white people. Ooh, that's not a good take, bruh. That's not even a cor- that's not nowhere near a correct take. And keep in mind, uh, I, I live in Chicago. Like with everything going on here, with all those shootings, you, it's a really dumb thing to say. The media picks and chooses which crimes are the like at least these days. They pick and choose which crimes are the what are the which crimes are the most important. And the fact that Chicago gets shot up at a very high rate does not get reported on enough because that's not a narrative they want. That's not a good narrative for them to spin because that's not interesting. Black people killing other black people? That's not interesting. So they uh, instead boost this like school shooting shit. They make sure at least that the school shooter is white. And if it's not, and if he's not white, they kind of just like, yeah, well, the school shooter, like, yeah, this is important for, to, you know, put the gun control shit out there. But like, yeah, you know, they're, they're a uh, yellow white, <laughs> or this person is like off white, brown white, beige. <laughs> but yeah, that's a wrong fucking thing to say. Very wrong. I bet if, if you counted the gun violence in Chicago right now, uh yeah, the number of non-white shooters would go way up. And it would it would seem like nothing compared to like white mass shooters. Who I mean it would seem like it would se- like white the, the number of white mass shooters would seem like nothing compared what to is that. It? It's white cis men. Oh no, it's a mental health crisis. We need to acknowledge it. That, that- no, we're not gonna use mental health illnesses as the reasoning of why like no, it's just that you're factually fucking wrong period it's not even the mental health thing you just you're an idiot you're 100 percent fucking wrong it's and it's obvious that you believe whatever the fucking uh media tells you <laughs> it's only the white cis men who are shooting people are you that fucking stupid are you that out of touch i bet you you're in your father in one in the car your parents bought you this is happening i have mental health issues and i'm white i'm not going out there doing this shit you do have mental issues, uh, sweetie. The only difference is you're too bitch made to pick up a gun, so you just in, you're just in your car making TikToks. Not saying that you you would be brave for shooting down um, 
for shoot for shoot, I don't I'm not saying you'd be brave for like shooting uh innocent people. I'm saying that you're so bitch made you can't even get out the house to do an activity. <laughs> that's your fucking problem. That that's what makes you um you know not as impressive. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, sweetie, you still got yeah, we so you still have mental health problems that still lead to anger and violent rhetoric, which is still a bad thing. Like you're still on the cusp. You're almost there. You, you you're getting close. You're almost. This is how a lot of these motherfuckers start. They in a car. Their eyes are dead. They're talking about how one group is responsible for all the fucking thing that's wrong in the world, and then if, next thing you know, someone ends up dead. You just you know you're no different from those people, sweetie. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it, girl. <laughs> it's white cis. You see the way his lip trembled right then? Oh my god, this motherfucker is crazy. I'm not going out doing this shit. <laughs> Hang on, where's the button? Where's the uh, the frame by frame thing? There it goes. <laughs> like that was just way too much time spent. On you making that face. <laughs> oh, oh, It's white cis men who are a part of the far right winged ideology of fascism. That is a true threat and the terrorism to this country. And if you don't fucking think so, you're a fucking dingbat. Yeah, honestly, what's the difference between him and somebody like Elliot Roger? Like none. The only difference is you haven't killed anyone yet. You haven't shot up anyone yet. <laughs> You're getting there though. Like I said, this is how it starts. Some asshole in his fucking car <laughs> talking shit about how someone like says some specific group is after everybody. That's how it starts. It always starts this way. Oh, and PS, a drag queen reading to your child isn't gonna do anything to them, but you showing up in militia gear wanting to play Call of Duty is gonna traumatize them for the rest of their life. Wait, so if I show up to a school and wanting to play Call of Duty with some kid, that's gonna traumatize them? <laughs> <laughs> compared to a drag queen like shaking his cheeks uh in my kid's face okay in fact that actually be a good idea show up in like be be a community leader show up in your show up in fatigues and do like like this mass like call of duty gaming session with a bunch of kids you know counteract this bullshit you know uh be about community participate you sh and like, and he should have said it like that. It sounds so reductive. You want to go in there and play Call of Duty? Uh, that's more dangerous. You shouldn't have said it like that. All right. This is a doctor. She wants everyone in the medical industry to focus on pronouns. These are our health professionals. Yeah. See, that's the thing. You're not a health professional anymore if you advertise and talk shit on TikTok. Especially if you say shit that doesn't sound true. <laughs> Especially if you're on there talking about, oh, we need pronouns. Like, yeah, nah, -uh, no. You should lose your fuck. I don't understand why it's not a thing for people to get fired for this. People like back, like it was just a few days ago where people got fired for talk for having show, social media accounts with questionable fucking content. What, can we bring that back? please <laughs> at least for doctors and cops and lawyers oh and nurses if you haven't heard already wink wink uh, uh yeah because this yeah this is this does not inspire confidence in our health in our health officials oh uh it's international pronouns day and this one is just for health, the healthcare professionals on TikTok. The fact that there is a healthcare professional wing on TikTok. Oh, good Lord. Oh, good Jesus. So if you're not a healthcare professional, keep scrolling or whatever or whatever. Yes. So, so fucking articulate for a doctor or whatever. <laughs> I can't tell you what to do. Oh, Jesus Christ. If your doctor, if you find out your doctor has a TikTok account, immediately drop them. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck what you say. Drop them immediately. This one is for the fact that they're more focused on social media clicks 
and like val- the validation they get from social media is not a good sign. It's not a good sign. International Pronouns Day and just for the healthcare professionals on TikTok. So if you're not a healthcare professional, keep scrolling or whatever. I can't tell you what to do. We have got to start making pronouns a standard part of our patient intake forms. No. Unless they're biologically wired <clears throat> as um, non Like, focusing on the non-binary thing. Unless they are biologically wired to be gender neutral. I don't see why. And biologically, like, trans people, like, if, let's say it's a trans man, like, there's a trans woman, there's still a man on the inside. Their insides are still male. They just take a lot of fucking hormones. So their outside will change. But like, the like they still, they're still guys. They're still guys. Like you should still go by like a normal man, woman fucking mandate. Like, yeah, you're a man, you're a woman. Like, I don't, it shouldn't fucking matter. If someone comes in and wants to be told that like would rather have their ego stroked than get fucking health care. I'm like, get the fuck out. We got people out here trying to get health care, trying to get their, trying to get shit taken care of, trying to get chemo and all this. And they don't fucking complain. <laughs> they don't fucking complain like this. And you over here wasting my fucking time with this bullshit. <laughs> with this, oh, oh, call me they, please, please. Like, do you want your hepatitis medication or not, motherfucker? Like, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for your bullshit. Like I said, there are people right now, like, on waiting lists for organs, and you over here fucking bitching because no one called you they. (laughs) The fuck? Here's the new patient packet that I use for new patients. And if you just scroll down, third question, there it is. It's as simple as this. Which pronouns would you prefer that we use when talking about you? She, her, hers, he, him, his, they, them, theirs, or... Uh, uh, Irie? I hope I'm saying that right. Like, bro, I can't afford to see my epilepsy specialist anymore, but this is more important. (laughs) Yeah. uh, The fact that you're at risk of having, you know, really serious seizures, that's nothing compared to not being called your right pronouns. Or other, and then a space to specify if you choose other. It's really that simple. I'm in a privileged position where I'm running the practice, so. Yeah, see, no. When you start talking like this, it's like, no. I don't see why you should get any. I don't think, I don't understand why, how, why you deserve any business after I can this. say whatever I want in my new patient form. But it doesn't matter if you're a doctor, nurse, healthcare administrator, CNA, pharmacy tech, OT, PT, respiratory therapist, anyone. Check out your new patient forms, and if there's not a space to write pronouns, ask the person in charge of it. It's usually not intentional, but it can make a big difference. So since I've been talking a little bit more about my pro- they veer viz pronouns, you know, my past videos, um, people have been wondering how to use them and how they work. Dear God. So while I'm drying my beard oil, I'll go ahead. <laughs> While I'm drying my beard oil, <laughs> does the beard oil is the beard oil counteracting with invisibility with an invisibility potion? Cause I don't see no fucking beard. The fuck you talking about, bitch? My beard. I'm gonna rewind that. That's amazing. <laughs> How they work. So while I'm drying my beard oil, I'll go ahead and tell you. <laughs> Is it oil to grow a beard? Cause ain't nothing there, bitch. <laughs> There's nothing there. Oh, uh, see, it's delusion. <laughs> I've done this before, but it's been like a good few months. So yeah. My pronouns are they, vir, viz. They, vir, viz. That is the same order as he, him, his, she, her, hers, and they, them, theirs. So in any sentence where you would Vavir Viz or Viz Vivir Ma Baby. Ever <laughs> neo pronoun of mine is equivalent. So there V is. There he is. I'm gonna go talk to Veer. I'm gonna go talk to him. Look at Viz new bag. 
look at his new bag. You getting it? I literally just found them on the internet over a year ago and... <laughs> I, I literally just found some shit on the internet a year ago, and now it's my whole personality. No, I am not delusional. No, I am not mentally ill. Leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> you know what? While we're on the topic of how white people are just fucking the world up for everyone. Self-hating liberal white woman goes on an <laughs> <laughs> rant. Almost in tears against white people. You're not one of the good white people. There are no good white people. You saw some random fucking tweet and was like, yeah, that's my, per that's another thing. You're like, that's my, per this is my personality for the day. This tweet. There are only anti-racist white people and racist white people. Anti-racist. Uh, what the fuck? There are only anti-racist. What the fuck? Isn't anti-racism a good thing? So there are good white people in. You just contradicted yourself. Why? Uh, what? You talking about bitch? Racism is a lifelong project, and the end goal is not for you to be good. It's for society to be good. Decenter yourself. How can society be good without people being good? You fucking ham. <laughs> you fucking walking ham hock. <laughs> are you a fucking oh? These people are so dumb. Do the work. Do the work. Like uh, the work I didn't do on my roots. <laughs> You are not <laughs> my shitty die job. All these bitches got shitty die jobs. Out there every day, actively trying to understand. You're not a good white person. Stop patting yourself on the back. Stop congratulating each other. Stop separating us from the bad white people. Don't sit out there in comments and say, we don't claim them. We are them. We are them. You know what's crazy? It's like, oh, she's probably the same person who, who will be like, I'm white, I can't speak on this, or I have so much privilege, I can't speak on this, but we'll continue to speak on this. <laughs> because so nar she's so narcissistic, she can't fucking help herself. She has to speak on every fucking thing. She has to be a cheerleader and a representative of every fucking thing, uh, despite her not being able to say anything, according to her logic. Like, like, even Riley Dennis eventually shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? Even that motherfucker stopped posting videos. He was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm not going to do this anymore. <laughs> I don't even know where, where the fuck he went. <laughs> we have no idea where he went. But he, even he was like, I'm going to stop being stupid. <laughs> because it's not my place to say such dumbass fucking things. I'm out of here. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm about this bitch. <laughs> Oogly Boogly, 799 Super Chat. With every TikTok, I get closer to, to just running off into the woods, never to be seen again. Gambam07, what happened to Riley? I have no idea. Like, he just stopped posting. I forgot when, because, like, it's been a long time since I, like, checked up on him. But, you know, he just stopped posting. He, he doesn't post videos anymore. We are the ones shooting up schools. We are. Uh, no, you're not. You're not the only ones doing it. The ones raping people. No, you're not. We are the ones enslaving people. No, you're not. We <laughs> we're the ones enslaving people. Also, so are we still? Are we still counting the Civil War era era slavery? It's still going on. Uh, so, cause what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> we're the ones enslaving people. Texas teacher's main focus on is on pride flags and pronouns. Hey, Miss Reed back here, Texas teacher with tip number two. for Texas teacher. They tried to throw me out a couple times, but I got back in somehow. Remember that yesterday we talked about having uh, the incorporation of a pride flag or pin or something in your classroom so that your students can see that you are supportive of their identities. They don't need to know that you're supportive. Like, who the fuck cares? When I go to school, I don't, I could give a fuck. <laughs> but if, if my teacher is a fan of the chocolates or not, <laughs> or, or uh, do you support my heterosexuality? Do you support that? Is, it, is that like, is that something you would support? Like, no, if anything, teachers should not be showing any support for your sexuality. That's kind of a thing we decided just shouldn't happen because of all of the teachers who very thoroughly support their kids' sexuality, if you know what I mean. 
Stop dipping your, your nose in the kid's business. That's none of your fucking business. Uh, tip number two today is that you uh, may want to share your pronouns with your students. And when you do that, that opens up that line of communication to let those students who may have pronouns that are different than what is on the school roster to come to you and share their pronouns with you. No. <laughs> Why? Sizzle Sister, $20 Super Chat. Hey, Jay, just want to stop in and say hi. Hope you're having a great holiday season. I am. Uh, evil hero diamond cat just some guy would be so angry with you right now like why <laughs> why i don't know i don't want i don't just some guy who the fuck is that again i think it's somebody on youtube but i forgot who mm. carl shade your pronouns are none of the students business <laughs> Oh, uh, I think that's just LBL, IBI, shit. But they say the YouTuber. Oh, the YouTuber. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Mysterious capitalist uh, JSG went off the rails. Oh, right. Yeah, I don't remember that person. Like, dudes who go off on, like, about pronouns and trans shit are usually dating trans people. Cause that, like some guys who have weak constitutions when it comes to who they're fucking, uh, they're always like, they always adapt the other person's, per, either their personality or their beliefs. And they just, they're just so weak willed that they can't, um, <laughs> they, they can't, they're, they're so crushed beneath that other person's boot that they can't think for themselves anymore. But it's, it's fine though. <laughs> God bless them. You and share their name with you. Like, I don't know if he's actually dating a trans person or not, but like, why else would you go off the ra off the rails like this? Unless you were always this way and you were just hiding it. Anyway. If it does not match with what is on the school roster, I highly suggest doing that. It's something as simple as, hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Miss Reed. My pronouns are she, her. And it's- And plus it sounds like some cult shit, to be honest. Like my pronouns are she, her. Like uh, why does people, why do people need to know that? There's too much identification. It's just weird. Uh, Dr. Dipshit's House of Memes, five dollars super chat. There are there's a really bad slaving problem in Asia and the Middle East right now, but they'll never talk about that because it breaks the narrative. True. Cause yeah, like I said, the the pronoun thing, especially announcing it after your name, it just feels so cultish. I don't know what about it is just so cool. It reminds me of this movie I saw, this horror movie called The Empty Man. They kind of touch on that shit and they kind of do it in a way where it's like, oh, they make it a, make a point that they don't do it that blatantly. It doesn't really ruin the movie or anything, but they basically make the point that um, doing the social justice warrior thing with the pronouns, shit, it actually does the exact opposite of what they think. Instead of making you an, an individual, it just makes you just anybody. It's like, it's... It's just gibberish. It's just, it's nothing. It's making you the same as everyone else. You become a part of a symbiotic mass of sameness. And this is one line that's actually really great from the movie. Um, I can't remember all of it, but it's like, oh shit. It's like, what has more value? It's like uh, the, oh my God. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot the fucking quote. It's a really good quote. Uh, yeah, but check out The Empty Man. It's kind of fucked up. And uh, you got to like really sit with it because the first 20 minutes is just this one segment before it really gets the plot kicks in. But it's actually it's pretty good. Red Rose Spark pronouns unemployed. <laughs> Angela uh, Perrin, Perrin, I think. Sorry if I'm butchering that. These are my papers. This is my faction. <laughs> Evil Hero Diamond Cat. Uh, oh, this is to someone else, but you know, he was really angry about DeSantis and the whole don't say game. Oh, that's still about that, you know, that YouTuber. Okay.
zigzag. The pronoun announcement is to indicate someone's political leanings. It's also the same because it treats proper pronouns as equivalent to made up ones. <laughs> yeah, it just takes it 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 takes meaning out of things. It's just and it's just, like I said, it's just culty because like cults are always like, oh, we're all the same as each other and we're all just one family, one unit. And like, it's, it's like, it's a, they, th they want you to believe it's about community, but it isn't. It's simple, quick, easy, and it opens up that line of safety and communication for your students. Also, your eyes are also dead. <laughs> Not wanting to date a trans person is transphobic. Oh, here we go. Even if it's because you want biological kids. Trigger warning, transphobia. Transphobia in my- The transphobia in my comment section needs to stop. My comment okay. section needs to stop. Yesterday I posted a TikTok responding to this question. What are the red flags you look for in men? And one of them was if he wouldn't date a trans woman. Red flag. And my comment section? My comment section is people full of common sense. <laughs> you get the idea. I can't put them all because there's too many. Let me break this down. Trans women are women. No, they're not. <laughs> so if you're heterosexual and you're a man and you said you wouldn't date a trans woman because it's a preference. That's just transphobia, period. No, it isn't. It's actually a fucking preference because some guys like pussy. They like pussy that gets wet and is like soft and not scabby and just a fucking slit between someone's leg. <laughs> no offense if you've had that surgery in, in the in the chat. But that's that's what it is. They don't want to be with some chick who needs to prep and like who needs to prep her pussy for a fucking date. Needs to put hydraulics in that motherfucker and crank it up. <laughs> no one wants that. Uh, Pixie199 Super Chat. Het woke women call themselves queer. It's political. <laughs> like, I understand why someone would not want that. I mean, it's naturally, it's, it's not only because, oh, the kids thing and the sex thing. It's also... Uh, the, oh, what's the, what's the thing I want to say? Um, it's when things aren't quite right. It's like the uncanny valley thing. Like we say that when it comes to like CGI and like, or pictures that don't look right, but it's also true with, with people. If shit doesn't look right, you're going to be like, you're going to be put off by that. You're going to be like, mm, no, at least romantically. At least romantically and like and sexually. You'd be like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't think so. <clears throat> Not to say if there's anything like wrong with you really, if you do like trans men or women, whatever. It just means you're possibly, possibly bi or gay. But it, like there's nothing like wrong with it exactly. But like, I, you can't, it's also nothing wrong with people who do not want to be with trans people. And that's something you just have to, you're gonna have to accept. Like we're an like human beings are animals. And just like animals in the animal kingdom, we choose our mates based on like like also on biological combat compatibility. So oh. <laughs> Jake Bobbin writes uncanny hole. <laughs> uh BSGA twenty two gonna start calling vaginas the uncanny. <laughs> Candy Valley. Uh, Chef Boy, are, are these nuts? Oh, <laughs> open, uh, open about to close. Open about to close again. Hole. That's I don't even know what the hell that is. <laughs> Evil Hero Diamond Cat. Lol. Uh, to skull the skull monkey or to skull monkey media. It's no different from incels that demand uh, government mandatory girlfriends. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it's like it's just incel logic upon incel logic upon incel. Like they keep repeating the same shit in different groups. The majority of the time, our preferences are rooted in something problematic. It no, it could be trauma. 
racism, transphobia, the list goes on. If you want to find out what your problematic preferences are, click the link in my bio and watch. Okay, <laughs> click the link in my bio <laughs> and go to this video. Let's, is it her video? Eight added newest. Is this her video or is this someone else's video? And plus, yeah, the low count, the low view count just says it all. I'm not going near that. Plus, like, I'm not, yeah, I'm not looking at a fucking um, YouTube video to change my entire fucking outlook. <laughs> I am now going to take you all through an example. This person asked why it's transphobic to not want to date a trans woman. Already starting off on the wrong foot by referring to cis women as regular women. They are. Then says something about trans women not being- Because if someone fucking asks you, why are trans, why are, why are a uh, cis hetero people the default? If someone asks you that, that stupid ass fucking question, reply with, because we create trans and gay people. And then they'll shut right the fuck up. <laughs> why are cis hetero people considered the default? Because we make you motherfuckers. That's why we're the factory that makes you. <laughs> we made you. That's why. We're the reason you fucking exist. That's why. So, uh, you can get on with that bullshit. <laughs> we made you, nigga. That's why we are considered the default because we have the, the ability to make you. Spawn freak because 96% of the population. Being able to carry children. If that's your sole reason for women as regular women, then says something about trans women not being able to carry children. If that's your sole reason for dating someone, keep that same energy for all the women who are infertile. Uh, I'm pretty sure, yeah, some people would not. If you're looking for marriage and kids, yes, you probably wouldn't stay with someone who's infertile. Like, yeah, it would suck, but yeah. Yeah. If you if you're looking for a relationship and kids, you're not yeah, you're not gonna be with someone who's infertile. Oh yeah. But also, yeah, I would have been <clears throat> when people ask me dumb questions like that, I would just be real with them. Like, you, like why wouldn't you be with a trans man? Because they don't have penises. I wanna fuck a penis. A hard, throbbing, real penis. Make them very uncomfortable with the question they just asked. They won't ask it again. <laughs> Make them hella uncomfortable. I want a throbbing cock, and when it's hard, it eventually shoots cum at me. And if maybe, if I'm feeling festive, I want to swallow that cum. Maybe. This is, this is a preference of mine. So if you don't measure up to that, get the fuck out my face. <laughs> just saying. Just be real fucking blunt and they'll shut right the fuck up. Anyway, uh, big hello. Uh, oh, sorry. Big helio, $2 super chat. Jay, please watch Lord of the Rings, the pronouns of power. <laughs> I'm not watching that shit. Oh, but uh, what I will watch, I forgot to say this at the beginning of the stream. I'll be watching the first couple episodes of that new uh, national treasure show, but I'm going to do it on Odyssey. I'm gonna watch it on honesty because I don't want to, like I have that little watermark thing, that little hack, but I don't want to risk losing my fucking channel. They might, cause you never know, they could claim this shit anyway. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be careful. So I mean, I'm gonna be watching that, I'm gonna do a little watch party of that on Odyssey, probably tomorrow. I haven't decided yet. Jam Bam 07, Jam I'm coming for that Slim Jim. <laughs> C-dub, you don't want a prolapse vag? <laughs> Autistic screeching, so we all have to be by or pan to be on the right side of history. <laughs> Clearly, yes, yes. Hot skull, one, two, three, out of context, someone clipped that. <laughs> Chef boy RD's nuts, I want... <laughs> I want a fucking penis, a hard talking penis. Well, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am a uh, red blooded heterosexual woman and I want penis, not um, a vagina <laughs> or a weird looking, um, you know, like those sausages that like, that are put in a casing. 
and they're like twisted around. <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want, I don't want when I'm stuck. I, I don't want to think of, I don't want to think of like sausages when I'm sucking like dick. You know what I mean? I want to just think about dick <laughs> because that's how I want to approach the dick. That's how you, I got to focus. <laughs> I won't be like laughing in the middle of sucking your dick. It's like, oh, this looks like one of those sausages that you that you put in their own little casing. It's just so cute. It's funny. <laughs> Why would you want that? Why would you want someone to secretly in the back of their mind think that you're uh, you you no? I think it's it's safe for everybody to just be like, look, you have preferences and that's cool and I'm gonna respect that. Whatever. Big Helio, two dollar super chat. It's a two minute short vid from Flash. Gets very funny. Evil Hero Diamond Cat, $2 super chat. I thought you were a straight guy. Oh, <laughs> uh, Evil Hero Diamond Cat with his shtick. Darth Raven Ravon, $4.99 super chat. A trans fun hole is just a deeper belly button. Can't imagine the smell from it. <laughs> or the lint that gets trapped in it. Oh, God. Why did you make me th have to make me think of that? Why? <laughs> a uh, Amaranth, is that why you're called J Longmoan? No, it's for a different reason. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck now people are asking me dick related questions i shouldn't have said a goddamn thing but i was trying to make a point <laughs> zigzag uh j longbone cut or uncut it doesn't really matter <laughs> doesn't really matter to me because all you gotta do is move it down <clears throat> move it down when you once you get a hold of it whatever all right let's get back to it i've read enough of this shit <laughs> That's your sole reason for dating someone. Keep that same energy for all the women who are infertile. Welcome back, you old snack. This is part two of learning about a air -er airs neo pronouns. Why the fuck do you look like this? Why do you look like a, look like a scene kid from the nineties? <laughs> Why? To hear about the history and origin of these neo pronouns, head back to my account. Now we're going to practice. The history of neo pronouns. You mean like what? five years ago. A is from Baltimore originally, then A moved to New York City for a few years. Now A lives in LA with air two cats. Of course you have cats. <laughs> of course you have cats. And the cat's like, y'all see this shit? <laughs> you see what I gotta live with? I gotta fucking validate this hoe because she can't go out and get dick. Have you seen air artwork yet? A loves working with pouring paints and watercolors. That's nice. Now get some dick and get a life. <laughs> no, not until you, not until I can call you she, damn it. I'm not funding your try hard bullshit. A hopes this practice helps. A knows that learning new words is difficult already, let alone how hard it is to unlearn how we operate and how we think about ourselves. And yeah, I'm not buying anything from you. I feel like it's going to be laced with peep. Pe uh, w <laughs> with PCP or some kind of hallucinogen. I, I don't trust you. Those around us. But A is so grateful you stayed so long to practice with air and A hopes you come back for more pronoun lessons with Pooka Luka Tooka. Pooka Luka Uh, oh shit. Libs of TikTok. Damn it. The fuck? Upper Moreland SD board member says she is against electing a cis white male as president of the district because it sends the wrong message to our community. Is it the fat one? <laughs> it's the fat one, isn't it? It's the it's one of the women, definitely. And it, but it's I bet you it's the fat chick. I bet you. I'm gonna press play. I bet, but I bet you it's the fat chick. Having said that, I believe that Mr. Delia would make an excellent president. However, I feel <laughs> it's the fat chick. <laughs> that electing the only cis white male on this board president of this district sends the wrong message to our community, a message that is contrary to what we as a board have been trying to accomplish. I think that I don't want to be in the presence of a man who will not accept my sexual advances. <laughs> a man who will not indoctrinate our children into <laughs> into using non-binary pronouns. A man who probably goes to the gym every now and then and has a healthy relationship with his parents. We do not need that. 
<laughs> in our schools. Ugh. A man who does not want to motorboat my flappy ass titties. <laughs> I just think it's unfair for me to be in the presence of someone who has their life together. I, 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 I'm just sorry. <laughs> Having women in charge is so great. <laughs> And that oh. our words have strength when they are spoken, whether we speak them from the neighborhood sidewalks or from behind these tables. Or from the local Dunkin' Donuts. Mrs. Stainback has done an exemplary job as president these last few months, and the strength of her performance has earned her my vote tonight. That work you did under my desk earlier really earned that fucking vote. I have a thought. Not saying that she actually gets fucked, but I'm just saying she would brag about someone fu fucking her for a job. <laughs> if she thinks that she thinks that would get her some some kind of clout. Uh, middle school teacher mocks parents who say who want want a say in lessons about gender, sexuality, and sex ed. Says parents should trust teachers because they're experts and parents are not. Yeah, uh, yeah. Your hair dye and those like really shitty nails in the shirt. It all just screams expert. The fact that you look like a fucking teen, a teenager from 1997 really just screams expert. Now I know the trolls are gonna be like, uh oh, she should have stopped there, but I'm not gonna do that. So the of course not. See about um, whether. Oh, I miss Grapples R. Gra Grapples R. I miss Grapple R. Super chat. Grapple R. Five dollars super chat. Riddle me this, Batman. Okay, there's another super chat I missed. Hang on a sec. Da, 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 da. Okay, here we go. Giddy328, Spide Alice super chat. Uh, are you still doing a video stream on Sneakerella? Also, let there be litness. <laughs> yeah, I'm still coming out with that Sneakerella video. I just have to edit it. There's so, there's so many reactions, by, whether by myself or with people that I've recorded that I need to get on. Jalen, that wild girl seven. I think I got all the super chats I missed so far. I think Grapple R was the one Batsy was talking about. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. or not sex education health education relationships gender all that stuff should be taught in the classroom here's what I uh yeah but not by you though well, yeah let one person let one person be in charge of your child's sexual development not the parents you know who've had sex and given birth to that child and it would probably know a lot and give them a very nuanced take on it no listen to some bitch who's got mismatched uh fingernails <laughs> A really, uh, once again, a really shitty fucking dye job with bad roots. Yeah, let this bitch be the, let this bitch be the arbiter of your child's sexuality. And you can't have a, and you, you cannot have a, an opinion on it either. That's not suspect at all. Bite deity, $2 super chat. Why must these people dress like clouds? I know. I think. You, you as in parents, send their kids to school to learn math, reading, writing, history, science from a professional, right? Uh, that hit science, whatever the fuck that is. <laughs> of course she doesn't really believe in science. Or she, of course she just, she just hand waves that shit. Science. <laughs> but in this Also, she's got makeup like a fucking anime e-girl, which already tells me not to fucking trust you at all. You're painting yourself up to be a little too cute. I don't trust no motherfucker who will walk around in real life in a professional space looking too cute. Like I'm not talking about like, you just look good. I, don't, I mean, you look cute. You purposely make yourself look uh, almost childlike in public. 
I'm not down with that. You're, you're a creep. You're automatically creepy to me. Like, don't do that shit. REB, $2 super chat. And I mean, like, when you are in, like, like, so when you're in a professional space doing that shit. And you look, if you were in a professional space and you look like, look like fucking, what's her name? Not Pokemon, the other bitch. <laughs> her, her anime double. Who the fuck is, who the fuck is her name? Whatever. That, you know, y'all know who I'm talking about. If you're walking around, in a professional space looking like that. I don't even know how Belle Delphine. That's someone in super chat. Someone in the chat said that. Dusty Molasses said, yeah. Belle Delphine. If you walk around looking like that, like a little two-bit <laughs> version of that. You shouldn't uh, like no, I'm not trusting you with fucking anything. I wouldn't trust you with my dog. Big hello, two dollars super chat. Uh and in fact, another pack of smokes. That's why I sound like this. <laughs> Oh, and sorry, a ninth pack of smokes. That's why I sound like this. The same token, a lot of people who do that also think that they're experts in sexuality education because they've had kids. With all due respect. No, they just teach their kids about sex because they've also had it. It's not some fucking, look, look. Knowing about where a dildo goes and where to get the latest dragon dildos, that's not, doesn't make you a fucking expert. <laughs> Just because you're online and you write fan fiction, <laughs> write rape play fan fiction, also doesn't make you a fucking expert. Just because you watch porn a lot does not make you a fucking expert. Just because you have your own OnlyFans does not make you a fucking expert. <laughs> And just because you tell children where to stick their genitals does not definitely does not make you a fucking expert. <laughs> Cause like, why are you teaching kids this and not teaching college classes if you're that fucking uh, experienced in this shit? If you can, if you can give like this towering insights, if you can get like this nuanced intellectual insight, why the fuck aren't you teaching college students? No, you're teaching little children, like middle school children. Because that's as far as you can go. That's as far as your intellectual, it, it, that's as far as your intellectual mind uh, ha, ha, can go. Teaching middle school students. You cannot, like what, you, what the fuck you, do you need to teach middle school students that their parents cannot tell them? Or a normal health, te health teacher can, can tell them? Nothing. Like I, just by looking at you, I can just tell you have a fucking OnlyFans and then, and, and you support sex, sex workers and that is the baseline. And that's like, that is, that is the end all of like where your, where your expertise, expertise lies. That, that's it. I have an OnlyFans and I have like a store where you can buy dragon dildos. I know everything about this. <laughs> Instead of learning this shit from a responsible adult who will tell you about the emotion of, of sex and it will tell you to wait until you're in a serious relationship or wait till you feel ready. You're going to, you're going to hear it from this bitch. Who's going to tell you all the wrong shit. I can already tell that you're one of those fucking girlfriends <laughs> who will tell their fucking friend to do everything wrong in a relationship. You look like that bitch. I wouldn't trust you with no fucking kids. Respect. Just because you had kids does not mean that you are a sexuality education expert. It does not mean you are an expert in sex. It does not mean you are an expert in the body. But, yeah, but neither are you, it looks like. It does like. not mean you are an expert in gender. It does not mean you are an expert in relationships. So the same way that we're sending our kids to school to learn these skills, these life skills, like math. Life skills. I love how she waves off, like she's so invested in sexual, uh, in sexual teaching, but math and science, oh, just math and <laughs> whatever the fuck that is. That is that, is that even a thing? I bet you, you said dick plus dick equal, equals dick. <laughs> she didn't understand that fucking equation. Math and quadratic equations and calculus and whatever else from a professional. We also need to be ensuring that our students are learning information about their health about identity, about very complex issues from a professional. I mean, like, it, it makes sense. It makes sense. Let me ask about specific questions. Has Twitter ever been involved in shadow banning? We do not shadow ban according to political <laughs> ideology or viewpoint or content, <clears throat> period. Uh, we, every, every model that we have on the network 
uh, is really looking at the behaviors on the network. Uh, we take those behaviors as signals. And I do want to point out that these signals evolve uh, minute, like minute by minute, hourly by hourly. These are not scarlet permanent letters that people then take on as a badge and will never be ranked high in search or not allowed to trend or ranked high in conversation. So these are models <laughs> that are looking at behaviors. And behaviors... Like, I don't need to explain this shit. Y'all know what it is if you're on Twitter. Uh, bad faith <laughs> or, if you're, or if you're following this Twitter shit. ...to intend to manipulate, distract, divide uh, a conversation um, or to unfairly amplify their content, which they didn't earn. So those are the signals that factor in. Uh, and, and we do rank... Uh, search. We do rank trends and we do rank conversations accordingly. That does not affect one's timeline. If you follow someone on Twitter, you're going to see them in your timeline. Now, we do uh, <laughs> rank the timeline for relevant, so it might take some scrolling to see everything. But what, you can also what, turn that ranking off in the settings so you can see everything in recency order. What about, and I think this might be something everybody agrees on, let's start with people that are calling for some type of violence of any kind or threatening violence against an individual. I think that would probably be an easy, we're not going to allow that, right? Yes, that, that is much easier. Any sort of uh, violent speech, encouragement towards violence, uh, harassment uh, is directly against our terms of service and we take immediate action on it. <laughs> what if somebody, now it gets more nuanced, oh, I wish somebody would just punch Hannity in the face. What do you do then? Well, we have to, in, in all these considerations, not to get into specifics, we have to take the context. We have to really understand what the context of the conversation is. And this is Context my ass. I remember when I got, um, like, I had, like, well, how many tweets were there? There was, like, seven, maybe seven I was consecutive tweets uh, that were um, reported at once on my old Twitter account. And you could, if you look at the context, you could tell that they were all jokes. Or they had nothing to do with what I was being accused of. Like, it was, like, like hating or harassment. One of them was, like, suicide after I, after I said... I think I said like kill me when I got when I like I retweeted some news about something that I didn't like and I said oh kill me <laughs> and apparently that was considered um supporting self-harm or suicide or some shit and then like there was some other jokes that I made they were like uh racially uh racially suggest su suggestive and whatnot and you could but you could look at the context and see that it was that it was bullshit. They were jokes, and that's where it ended. But then they still uh, suspended my account anyway, and then I tried to appeal a couple times, and they were like, "Oh no, we still, we still think this, uh, we still think this, these claims hold up." And I'm like, "No, they don't." Oh, unfortunately, I don't think I could get my account uh, reinstated, my old account, because I think it was just too far gone. Because they said it was com like permanently suspended. So I couldn't get it back, but it's fine though. Cause I got my, you know, my new account is doing numbers is doing fine. Joey Joster, $5 super chat. Hey, have you heard about that weird Twitter guy who's on the run because he made certain things on sex and children? Uh, yeah, you gotta be specific because there's a lot of those. <laughs> extremely hard for an algorithm to do and, and certainly hard for, for humans to do. So we make sure that all of our folks understand the cultural context that something is said. Uh, because some cultural contexts allow for some speech that uh, enables some speech that other cultural, cultural contexts don't. So as we review cases of reports or blocks or mutes. I can't stand people defending him like, oh, he didn't know that this bad stuff was going on, on Twitter. But you like doing, you're doing press conferences. You're, you're going on TV talking about, we're not doing that. We're not doing any of this shit. So it's like, so why are you speaking on shit you don't know about in your own company? That's bullshit. You had to have known something. Get the fuck out of here. Or you're extremely fucking incompetent and you were just sitting back collecting checks. Like, don't defend his ass. I love how the people will defend him, but shit all on shit on Elon for trying to like, for pointing the shit out. It's hilarious. Like what people are making me fucking sick. <laughs> bite, uh, bite deity, $5 super chat. As much as I like to stick around, I got to get some sleep, get to work in a snowstorm tomorrow. Oh shit. Godspeed. Uh, good night and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Goodbye. And good luck in that damn snow. I don't know what state you're in. Uh, hopefully you're not in the fucking Midwest. <laughs> Ugh.
we have to make sure that we're taking into consideration that context and then acting acting appropriately and doing so with with warnings with notices with uh, a temporary lock of the account until that tweet is reviewed or or deleted and ideally giving them the exact reasons why it violates and our you have enough people that would be able to monitor and handle that that you won't miss threats we'll certainly miss things and mm. we're, we're certainly going to make mistakes <laughs> Oh, we're, we'll, certainly make, we'll certainly make we'll certainly miss things. Yeah, I think it's more complicated than everything. You mi- you made a whole bunch of mistakes. You missed a lot. Everybody knows you. Конечно, меня очень позабавило, хотя не удивило, то, что обменяли Бута все-таки на Грайнер, а не на Уилма. Я, во-первых, поздравляю Бута, поздравляю всю его семью. Мы много лет были на связи с его семьей, насколько было это возможно с ним самим, как-то, насколько это было возможно, общались. Это, конечно, огромное. Радость, облегчение для всех нас, но для всех нас, ладно, что это для семьи, я даже не могу себе представить. Но то, что его обвиняли, обменяли, не на героя разведчика. Не, имперного. Ведь он же разведчик. Уилл, да? да? Он разведчик, его приняли, Шпион. что называется, при передаче информации на флешке. Он там рассказывал, что это он на флешке хотел, вот ему должны были фотографии церквей Сергея Посада передать на флешке. Фотографии церкви флешки. друг другу передают. Правда же, как мы берем? Смотри, где я вот был. Фл... Для этого, да, для этого флешку не приносит. Вполне себе нормального качества, не хуже, чем на флешке. Он... Okay, this clip goes on a little long, but basically what they're saying is like, what y'all traded this bitch for a fucking terrorist and you didn't bother bringing back a hero for who who would be considered a hero in your country you're fucking idiots basically uh and they're right <laughs> but let's get past it's like yeah it's basically that's the meat and potatoes of that shit hang on though i think someone gave me a super chat oh no 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 yeah i thought i missed one whatever к противостоянию геополитическому. Please stop scrolling if you or someone that you love. Uh, I think I've seen this. Absolutely terrifying. This TikToker had a near-death experience after Dr. Gallagher of Miami performed a double mastectomy and ignored complications. Dr. Gallagher is famous for her TikToks about yeeting the teats. Of once top surgery. I got top surgery in August of 2022, so this year. Um, and I don't regret top surgery, but I do regret who I got surgery with and I need to talk about it. The reason it's so important that this is on TikTok is because so is she. She has a massive platform and her name is Dr. Gallagher. Like, like I said, I do feel sorry for you, bruh, but uh, why the fuck were you trolling for, for doctors on TikTok instead of the fucking yellow pages or instead of um, Googling it? What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> And don't tell me it's desperation when they just, they jump at the shit. They'll do it like immediately. Like it's not desperation. You could have easily gotten it done. This is e- just as easy as you f- being able to find a fraud. You could have found someone reputable. But you got our, you got your fucking doctor off TikTok. It's like, oh, why y'all make it hard to feel sorry for you? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Do it. Do it the right way, Jesus. Would you find a cancer doctor on TikTok? Would you find a doctor who treated like HIV and AIDS or like heart heart disease? Would you find that motherfucker on TikTok? No, you wouldn't. You you don't live in a country where you're outlawed to, for being uh, we're outlawed. It's like outlawed to be trans. You're not under any desperation. You could have gone to fucking Google and and looked up a reputable doctor. What are you doing? Irie, I think that says, as a Floridian, I can say with certainty that we do not claim Dr. Gallagher. Doctors don't even, I'm sure don't even claim that bitch. The skull monkey media, if you you use TikTok for anything, you get what you deserve. Uh, Titus Deletus, (laughs) Ash Mellon, it's a big money for this specific field. Yeah, so he would have easily found someone to do it legit. They're like, they're, they're clamoring for these little cash cows. So you would have, he would have easily found someone who's reputable. This is not like the old days where it's desperate. Oh, I can't find anyone to get it. You can definitely find someone to get it done. There's no excuse for you not giving a fuck about how your surgery is done. 
Because I bet you if you had cancer and you had to find a doctor who specializes in cancer, you would have Googled that shit instead of doing it on over Twitter. Or not over Twitter, over TikTok. You know damn well. <laughs> but like, it's like you don't even take your own gender shit seriously enough to do pr pr to do real research. Okay. Four days after top surgery with Dr. Gallagher, my top surgery incision split open and started bleeding. At first she said that it was just bruising, and then when she saw me in person the day before, I flew home. Um, she- Also, if like someone does surgery on you, like certain types of surgery, they would tell you to lose a little weight. And I'm bit willing to bet this doctor didn't tell her to lose a little weight. <laughs> just saying. She said that it was fluid buildup and that it had to just bleed out on its own through the open wound. I flew back to Ohio and the bleeding did not stop. I was waking up to blood all over my clothes and sheets every single day. I could barely move or leave the house. At one point, I did decide a couple weeks after surgery to go out with some friends. I was slow, I was careful, and about halfway through the night, a blood clot the size of a golf ball fell out of me. Jesus fucking I was Christ. In the emergency room. I was in tachycardia by the time I got there. They admitted me and paged their plastic surgery team. The resident there took a photo, and I sent that photo as well as the blood clot to Dr. Gallagher. She replied back and made a joke that I was menstruating and said I didn't need to go to the ER, even though I'd already gone. The next day I woke up and the hole in my incision had collapsed into a black hollow cavity. There was discolored tissue spilling out of it um, and it looked like it was gonna open more. There was also another hole farther back on the incision that was starting to rip. I took photos, graphic photos of my body and I sent them to Gallagher in a panic at this point. And keep in mind, uh, she doesn't regret this. <laughs> But to take a quote from Batman versus Superman, you will. <laughs> like you definitely, you should definitely um, be kicking yourself in the ass for even thinking to find a fucking doctor on TikTok. I just can't get over that. I can't get over that. You found your doctor on TikTok. <laughs> Point. I reached out to a local top surgeon uh, and sent him my photos. He squeezed me in first thing the next morning. And when I saw him, he said that by sight alone, he could tell that it was severely infected. He was really angry with Dr. Gallagher. And he told me that- Yeah, cause that's what real doctors, they get angry at doctors who don't know how to do their fucking job. That's a real nigga. That's a real doctor nigga. <laughs> doctors will get visibly fucking angry and start like, they get fucking belligerent when they hear about a doctor fucking something up. That's how you know when you got a real, a real doctor is not gonna fucking laugh and make jokes like, oh my God, blood came out of you. That's so fucking queer. She didn't give a shit about me. <laughs> he said I would need surgery that Friday. So three days later, when I got home from that appointment, I opened my email to see Dr. Gallagher's response, expecting her to urge me to go seek a second opinion given the complications that I was having. And second opinions in trans medicine? <laughs> instead, she told me it was looking good and that it wasn't infected. I was put under anesthesia for a second. Yeah, see, they want you to stay fucked up and sick so you'll keep going to them. They want you to stay, like, sick and fucked up so you'll keep going to them over. They don't want, they want you to fix this fucking problem. Come on. Come on. They want you to keep coming. To, they keep feeding you bullshit and souping up your e your already fragile ego. And, uh, and like, look, we're joking with each other. We're, we found each other on TikTok. We share TikToks with each other. <laughs> And like that, they think you're stupid basically. Cause they're just trying to fleece you for your fucking money. Cause this is, like I said, it's a huge cash cow for them. So they think you're stupid. They think you're a fucking idiot. Otherwise they just tell you the, the cold hard truth about what the hell you're gonna go through doing this shit. They think you're dumb. Like if you go to a fucking doctor, like a gender reassignment doctor or whatever, and they don't tell you like, yeah, uh, that vagina you want, you might die from that surgery. And on top of that, uh, you're gonna have to dilate that shit for the rest of your fucking life. It's not gonna, you ain't gonna get wet like other women. Sex is gonna be real, it might be real fucking painful and restricting and be a real fucking hassle. It's not gonna be a pussy. It's just gonna be something that looks like one to ease your mental illness. If you don't fucking hear that, get the fuck out of there. If you don't, they don't tell you that, they think you're stupid. 
They think you will listen to anything because they already don't fucking respect you. Second surgery on the 2nd of September and they took out over half of Little King body. origami <laughs> pussy. <laughs> Stop that shit. <laughs> this bacteria has a very high mortality rate. Gallagher had told me to do absolutely nothing about it. If I had listened to her, I would be dead. They gave me an extra large strain and I had to have it in for over three weeks. When I shared my story on Twitter, I got countless replies from people expressing that they had similar issues with Gallagher. Yeah. Including others who almost died. Yep. Please share this. Stop fucking looking for doctors on TikTok. Why are you motherfuckers doing that? It's not like you're in dire straits. It's not like it's like 20 years, 20, 30 years ago where shit was not this accessible. It's more than accessible now. Ain't no excuse to get doctors off TikTok. No excuse whatsoever. So it's kind of hard to even feel sorry for you because it's like, how are you just doing? How is no one telling you? That's how you know. These motherfuckers just surround themselves with people in a hug box and don't listen to any fucking outside opinions because anyone would have told you, like, don't find a doctor on TikTok. Go to, go to the fucking, go to the yellow pages. Google some shit, do some research. No, you want to hurry up and get the shit done right now. That's the problem. And then you surround yourself with people who are like, yeah, get it done. Do it now. Do it now. I got a doctor that I found on TikTok. Do it now. Yeah. You don't. <laughs> oh. Oh, really? How is she still practicing though? Jesus, because there's probably a bunch of doctors who believe this. And if they, she does get called out, the other doctors will be probably be called transphobic for doing that. Like, she's the only doctor who's helping us. <laughs> They'll probably pull that bullshit. Please stay safe. Medium article with the details is in my box. I've read both of the trans- You better be suing, goddammit. You better be fucking suing her for everything she's got. Otherwise, it's just like, you might as well just- why you, if you're not suing her, why are you even complaining? Why are you even saying shit? Why should anyone feel sorry for you if you're not gonna take it, take responsibility for that shit? If you're not suing, if you're not getting a lawyer to sue her, that bitch, I don't understand why you even, why you even made that TikTok. Just a fucking, it's just like a little thing that happened to you then. Transcripts of Matt Miller and his ex-wife, along with other articles of public. Wait, scoop documents reveal superintendent of L Lakota district's alleged sexual fantasies and desires involving students, including raping and drugging minors. Jesus fucking Christ. He's still employed there and parents are demanding his resignation and an investigation. I am not comforted by the conclusion of this so-called investigation. In fact, I'm even more concerned. In his transcript, Matt Miller paints the picture of being a victim of his wife's sick desires, which includes engaging in sexual fantasies about young children in our district. Now he claims he is a victim of a smear campaign and calls everyone who questions him crazy. Well, I have many questions. If what Matt says is true, why wasn't he concerned for his children's safety? If what Matt says is true, why didn't he ask for help? If what Matt says is true, why didn't he tell his wife no? Why did Matt choose to engage in the sexual fantasy and role-playing about children? Why did Matt continue reading once he knew it involved three young boys in Lakota's school district? Why didn't Matt leave his wife? Why was his wife the one that filed the divorce shortly after these events took place? Although he is taking no responsibility for his actions, he doesn't deny participating in them. In his transcript, he said he didn't cross lines with minors. I disagree. He already crossed many lines by participating in sexual fantasies and role play involving young children. Admittedly. My biggest fear is that this board spent an hour and a half behind a closed door meeting to decide how to wash the wet. There are plenty of other states and cities that would welcome him with open arms. Not here. We are Lakota means everything about this man's life, his personal life, his professional life, represents me, my five kids, all of you, and all of them. We cannot do that. I'm asking for your resignation, and I need all of you to I don't care who you spoke to, thoughts become 
Words become actions. If you had a brother or an uncle or any male that you know come to you and tell you that he and his wife had discussions about sexual And like notice that whole board is like just ninety percent fucking women. Like how are you not jumping to fire this motherfucker? Like how are you not jumping at it? Acts with children. When women are in charge, everything's better. <laughs> you let that man alone with your kids? Of course not. You would keep a keen eye on them. My youngest, that is currently in high school, has special needs and is very vulnerable. I now feel as though I need to keep a keen eye on her while at school. And if something, something bad did happen, what's to stop this district and board from overlooking this as well? I ask the board to protect my daughter. I ask the board to protect. Someone in chat was like, uh... Alderan, I think this is. It's role play, but it still set major red flags. Yeah, I'm like, how does how does anyone even know about this shit? Because if someone found out about it because they were stupid, they were not smart enough. So like, because like how like how does anyone know he's fantasizing about this shit? The fact that it's so easily accessible to people, the teachers actually know now. Like, yeah, I, I I'm not surprised that. People are fucking worried, like, because if you're having fantasies about fucking teenagers and you work around nothing but teenagers, or I, actually, I don't know, I don't know how old are they. Does it say? And it doesn't fucking say. But still, like, eh, uh, like if you're gonna fantasize about sick shit, at least cover it up so no one finds it. Because then you cannot, if you don't take it seriously, don't be surprised when parents are coming out of the fucking world work, like, get rid of this motherfucker. You, you, you a little creepy. <laughs> you, you're a little fucking creepy. Tenebra, I think it says. I think it said it's a middle school. Oh, well. Mm. Oh, so, then someone said it's a high school. Okay, which one is it, though? For Max Smiley, $5 Super Chat, remind public schools were sold as a concept that parents would be present 100% in content uh before it was all homeschooling really says i remember incidents involving teachers touching kids inappropriately inappropriately getting resolved immediately how things have changed yeah tiger i uh, 1283 now i think it's better for the shit to be out so we know who those gross fucks are I mean, a part of me agrees with that, but a part of me is like, uh, I mean, yeah, it's good to know, but as, as long as like, if they slipped up and the information got out fine, but like, if someone like, like it, like invaded their privacy, then that's an issue. But if, yeah, if it just slipped out because they were too stupid to have the shit covered the fuck up, then yeah, you can't be surprised if people are trying, like parents are trying to get you fired. <laughs> all of our kids protect them as your own anyone that has talked about doing sexual types of things with children needs serious help but most importantly must be removed from any possible scenario of being overwhelmed by these temptations god like i'm all about not punishing people for thoughts but like if you're like you gotta like be like damn you're around kids all the time and then you think about fucking them like how like what are people supposed to think about you? Like, well, I haven't actually done it yet, not yet. <laughs> it still is like like if you are working with paraplegics or let's see coma coma patients, and then you have fan fiction about how you fantasize about taking advantage of coma patients. And how you rape coma patients while they're like as unconscious. That's still concerning because you're around these motherfuckers all the time. You specifically chose a um, profession where you're around very vulnerable people while also fantasizing about taking advantage of said vulnerable people. That's fucking weird. And that's very suspect. You cannot be mad that someone's 
uh, that someone is concerned about that. You cannot say, oh, well, come on, you can't, oh, the thought police over it. No, motherfucker, not when you specifically get into a business, into a, a profession where you're around the vulnerable people you fantasize about raping. That ain't, that ain't right. It's like, it's like, um, oh, someone said in the chat before I did. Uh, Red Rose Spark is like, or like having a zoophilia fetish while being a vet. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, you haven't really done, committed a crime yet, but you ain't going to be at this school. Sorry. No, I'd fire your ass. I'm sorry. That's just as a precaution. I'm sorry. But that's just like, that's. Now, if he was working at a bank, I would be like, yeah, this is kind of like thought crime, isn't it? Like, yeah, it's a, it's a bank. It's not like he's around, actually around kids. It's a bank. And we don't know if he would actually hurt a child, but like now he's in a profession where he's with, he's around children. Like, nah, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I could like keep that motherfucker around. I'm just, I'm just being real. Forbid that he could act them out. A man who is in charge of more than 17,000 children in our school district made the decision to participate in sexual role playing. This was an intentional act with the purpose of sexual arousal and climax. It's despicable. Who will be taking audience? Who audience. Will, who will be taking responsibility if we later find out that Matt Miller decided to cross? I keep thinking she says she's saying Matt Miller. <laughs> Who's going to take that responsibility? He is either a weak man or he's lying. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. And let's assume he's just a weak man and he couldn't stand up to his wife. He couldn't say no. Let's say that he was just a weak father and he couldn't stand up for his kids. Excuse I don't me. want a weak man as our superintendent. Mm. A person in this role should be of utmost character, morals, values for our children. I want Matt Miller to resign from Lakota schools effective immediately. That's problematic! <laughs> That is <laughs> that outro is so fucking abrupt, and right after such like heavy subject matter, <laughs> that's problematic. <laughs> it sounds like Bill Burr too. What the fuck? Uh, Dusty molasses. If you have creepy fantasies, it's up to you not to act on them. A person with a drinking problem working at a bar doesn't look good, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Here we go. This looks like an ad for homeschooling. <laughs> what my teacher had in her classroom, a bisexual shack. Yeah, that's not creepy. <laughs> like bisexual cookies here. But Gender fluid. Why are you dragging these flags on the floor? Like American flags, you can't even like drag on the floor because that's seen as disrespectful. When they LGBTQ ally, that is the ugliest fucking flag. That's like Pugsley Adams. <laughs> Pugsley Adams wearing some kind of like, I can't even say it. Cause it's like, this is such, this is the ugliest fucking thing I've ever seen. LGBTQ pride. What's the difference between pride and ally? I don't get it. Um, Targaryen, <laughs> I don't know. I guess that means, I guess it says transgender flag. And that's the asexual flag. Whatever. Biological sex is fake. Ugh, not your crazy ass. Yes, we all know that gender roles are f Yeah, biological sex is fake. That's why I have hair on my arms like a man. I have shoulder bumps like a man. I got have a, a Adam's apple like a man. I have a beard like a man. I have a voice like a man. <laughs> Because bio bi biological sex is fake. But do not say to a trans person, biologically male, born female, male bodied. No, 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 no. There is no biological criteria for gender that is both universal and a binary in human beings. Where does that leave us? I think I read that in a police pamphlet somewhere. <laughs> Hello, I'm not. Oh, such a creep. Uh, one, one of this person's alternate identities uses bug, dirt, it pronouns. Yeah, all right, so I'm guessing this person used to eat bugs and worms when they were a child, and that's, uh, she wants to go back to that feeling of home. 
<laughs> hey, Magpie, um, if you don't mind me asking, could you please show us an example of how to use your pronouns? Mm. <laughs> oh, look, she got suffocated tea bags as earrings. <laughs> uh, or no, maybe they're melted. <laughs> Maybe they're melted bathtub stoppers. What the fuck is this? Not magpie, I'm tall, but I can explain. So magpie's pronoun set is it, bug, dirt, they, right? It and they are used normally. Okay. Um, Ebony Williams, five dollars super chat. I can't help but feel these teachers are desperate to be friends with their students because they weren't popular in school. Yeah, I said that earlier. <laughs> That's exact. Yeah, I exactly. I said that earlier in the stream. Like these motherfuckers don't have friends. They're socially inept, but they can connect with kids. Because kids don't, they don't know the fucking difference. Kyle R, they look like moldy tampons. Uh, uh, 60, uh, seven, seven, oh my God. 60, 70, 60. Uh, they look like, or 60, 7, 60. Okay, I got it. Uh, they look like deformed shrooms. <laughs> use tampons. Everybody says use tampons. So its name is Magpie, the sweater belongs to it, and it was going by itself. And then their name is Magpie, this belongs to them, they were going by themselves. For Bug it would be Bug's name is Magpie, the sweater belongs to Bug, Bug was going by Bug's self. And then for Dirt it would be Dirt is Magpie, the sweater belongs to Dirt, Dirt was going by Dirt's self. You can use these- Someone in school called you a- <laughs> called you Dirt, and then you made it your whole personality. <laughs> I'll get you. I'll show you that this doesn't bother me. I'll call myself dirt self. Interchangeably in a sentence, you can use just one of them, or you can use different ones at different times. Hope this helps. Just some food for thought. But if you ask me my pronouns, and I wait, the rules keep changing. Even if you use the correct pronouns, it's still not good enough. Uh oh, shit. R E B five dollars super chat. This is what happens when you close down all the insane asylums. Uh, Grand Dark Fang, five dollars super chat. Y'all gotta stop using they them pronouns. Y'all ain't Venom. <laughs> Venom. <laughs> I say oh, I use boy. any pronouns, and you only use she her. <laughs> Hope this helps. Just some food for Dang thought. Awesome. But if you ask me my pronouns, and I say I use any pronouns, and you only use she her, <laughs> you're a fucking loser. Is it really that hard to call me a he now and then? Oh. No, because you look like a fucking girl. You look like Sarah Plain and Tall's edgy alternative sister. You don't look like a fucking man at all. Like, how much of an entitled jackass do you have to be? You can't call me a fucking man every now and then? No, because you don't look like one. Your, your personal perception of yourself is not indicative of how other people see you. It doesn't dictate how other people are going to see you. That whatever, if like like you cannot, di yeah, you can't dictate how other people see you unless you actually act like that person. Not saying you should act like a man suddenly just to uh, so, so just so people can call you uh, something different because you're not that thing. Um, but uh, yeah, people decide what they think about you based on their perception of you, how you act, how you present yourself. That's how that works. You can't call me he every now and then. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, you smug ass. You have a piece of metal through your nose. The t not even, not even the septum. Through the top of your nose. You look like a jackass. I feel like I could hook up a vibrator charger to your fucking face. <laughs> like, boop. Yeah, it should be fully charged in about an hour. Shit. <laughs> That moment every month wouldn't fucking hurt you. I am gender fluid. It doesn't matter if I wear makeup. It doesn't matter if I decide I want to look cis today. It doesn't matter. I'm still gender fluid. I'm not a woman every single day. And quite frankly, most. Uh, yeah, but see, that's your problem. You don't feel like a girl every single day, but you look like a girl every single day, and you act like one every single day, and you are one every single day. <laughs> Sorry. This is why, yeah, I never, like, I'm never gonna take that, I'm never gonna take that they, them shit seriously. That non-binary shit, it just, come on. That gender, the, the gender fluid non-binary shit, just come on, bruh. <laughs> come on, bruh, come on, bruh. I'm a mix of the two. I'm the motherfucking man. My dick slang just like my titties do.
Wow. Someone please throw her in a locker, please. Some people don't get bullied enough. You can just tell they got a little too much confidence. They got a little too much. They need to be brought down a little bit. Like some of these damn kids have too much self-confidence to the point of being un intolerable fucking people. You got <laughs> grapple R, bully this man. And for, yeah, for one thing, girl, you don't want to be a man. Otherwise you get your be ass beat regularly for your fucking attitude. N no hesitation. People just knock you the fuck out and be done with it. You lucky you a girl. You fucking lucky as hell. You got the privilege of not being knocked the fuck out just for your personality. <laughs> you luckier than shit. You have no idea how lucky you are. Robert, Chi oh sorry, Robert, Robot Chicken, 670, 199 Super Chat. What the fuck did I just walk into? Hell, this is pure fucking hell. Like I say, you, you luckier than fuck that you are not a man. Otherwise you just get slapped every day. You dig knock the fuck out every day. <laughs> For how much of a smug idiot you are. Darth Ravon, 199 Super Chat. Gender fluid equals pick a when it benefits you. <laughs> a red rose spark. She looks like Uma Thurman if she was mentally ill. <laughs> no offense to Uma Thurman though. <laughs> Controversial opinion, but if you if you're hanging out like heck, every time someone starts a sentence with controversial fucking opinion, like oh, here we go with some bullshit. Probably the most tepid, self-important shit. If you're hanging out with black people and you want to invite a white person, you need to make sure to get permission because not everyone feels comfortable with white people and their shenanigans. <laughs> you have a token white. And you're hanging out with your friend. Yeah, a token white, not white, not even a person. Just and a white. token white. And you're hanging out with your friend group of color. Your colored friends. <laughs> Why do people still say of color? You know that means colored, right? It's just a, a it's a de it's a deconstructed way of col uh, saying colored. Colored, like putting ed. It's like it's the difference. It's like um. It's like saying shredded. And no, no, I fucked up. Damn it. But yeah, it's like, it's, it's how it is in Spanish. Um, when like certain things, like, like when you, some Spanish things are phrased that way. Something of something of something. And then, but in English it's, it's uh, simplified to some like, yeah, like the word colored. You know what I mean? Uh, so they're basically, yeah, she's basically saying, uh, colored, <laughs> your colored friends. <laughs> it's hard to explain like the language thing, Jesus. I got, I confuse myself talking about the shit, but yeah, she's basically saying colored people. When you say people of color, you're saying colored people. <laughs> That's a deconstructed it's way like, of saying like colored people. Do. Controversial opinion, but if you have a token white and you're hanging out with your controversial opinion, of color. You need to ask permission from everybody in the group to bring your white friend. Like, don't. Yeah, that's not how you know people work. Uh, like you know damn well most of these people, like her, do not have friends. Like, what friend group, bitch? Who accepted you? <laughs> who who tolerates your bullshit? I don't believe don't you even have friends. Them ask for explicit permission from everyone because just because you're comfortable with them doesn't mean that everybody's comfortable with them. I might not be in the mood to deal with white shenanigans that day. That's You know, there's certain black people who probably wouldn't accept you and their friend group. You know that, right? <laughs> Don't stand in front of a railway car. <laughs> oh, anyway. <laughs> Don't exist doing anything. Anyway, yeah, I missed the super chat. Mr. Paul, or sorry, M. Pause, five pound super chat. What the fucking quagmire did I stumble across? Jay, your stamina for such buffoonery is impressive. It's all funny.
uh, zigzag. If they're uncomfortable with hanging out with any race, they can fuck off. Grapple are urban shenanigans. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. And another thing, it feeds into their ego. Like, don't don't let them think they're a good white person. Don't don't give them that card to use against others. Like, you sit around thinking about this all day. Think about that for a minute. You sit around thinking about different races, homogenizing them in your own mind like this. Like, get a life. Grow the fuck up. Because, you know, if she thinks about white people like this, she thinks about black people like this, brown people, her own people. <laughs> like, it doesn't just stop. It. Like, don't think it for a minute it just stops at white people. It doesn't. It goes across all races. She just won't say that other shit out loud. Like I said, just because it's just because she, like just because these motherfuckers, these progressives and social justice warriors will go after a comfortable race doesn't mean they ain't going after you, or don't mean don't or don't mean they won't go after you, or aren't, aren't already thinking the same racist shit as any other fucking races because they are, they are. People think that she's acceptable. Oh, she's talking about white people. It's like whatever, bitch. Like the same people who are racist to white people now would have been racist towards your black brown ass 30, 50 fucking years ago. It's the same fucking mentality. Whoever was acceptable to fucking hate, like was hated, like, yeah, whoever, like whoever was acceptable to hate, they would hate that person. And right now it's just, just so happened to be white people. So, um, yeah, take that fucking bass out your voice. Don't puff your chest out thinking this is a, a fucking moment for your, for your ass because she probably already thinks the same shit about you or she would have <laughs> so you know there people please don't do that i read to kids in drag oh no drag queen story hour a nonprofit which receives tax dollars oh tax dollars to go into schools and public libraries to teach drag to oh sorry to keep to teach kids drag to, to teach kids about drag my brain is trying to protect me from this this, this knowledge. <clears throat> Admits that they use drag to con to introduce kids to queerness. Our taxes are being used to sexualize uh, and confuse our kids. Called Drag Queen Story Hour. Drag Queen Story Hour uses drag to promote literacy, teach about queer lives, and look how small those fucking kids are. They don't even understand what the fuck you are saying. <laughs> They're not even old enough to understand the complex shit you are telling them. What's the point? What's the point? Spark kid's imagination. Look how small that kid, that kid doesn't know where the fuck he is. Hang on. Drag to promote literacy. Look at that kid that walks into the frame. And spark <laughs> yeah, because he understands oh queer lives, queer um allies and queer politics we talk about this kid does not know where the fuck he is <laughs> but programs like ours are being under attack right-wing politicians are spreading dangerous conspiracy theories about and inciting violence against drag performers and queer communities everywhere if you shake your ass in this in the face of a child if you strip in front of a child if you do anything sexual in front of a child I'm sorry, but wh what the fuck is anyone supposed to think? Y'all muddying up, like, not, you're muddying up the LGBT community. You're like, you're making them look fucking bad doing that dumb shit. And I'm pretty sure, like, usually gay people or like gay people who do like the whole club scene thing don't like being around fucking kids when they're doing their damn thing. Or like, or no, stop, fuck it. No adult likes being around kids when they're out doing their little adult dirt. Nobody. So if you want to do your dirt and be around kids at the same fucking time, sorry, but that looks suspect as hell. Sorry if that doesn't, uh, if that offends you, but you look suspect when you want to be sexual around kids and drag is normally considered to be highly sexual, which is fine, but that shit should be relegated uh, to the entertainment of adults, not children. And you don't lie to people and say, because I've seen video after video th th so far of this shit being sexual around kids. You just can't say that it's not happening. No one's that fucking, well, there are people that's stupid who genuinely don't think any sexualizing children is happening in drag story hour, but it is, it is. This is part of a coordinated campaign to deny the rights of queer people 
who already endure disproportional rates of suicide and homelessness, and they're trying to legislate us out of existence. Yeah, uh, we suffer so much suicide and homelessness, uh, 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 and we're gonna make it worse by twerking in front of your children. <laughs> We like making and shit trying worse. to legislate us out of existence. A teacher in Lawrenceville, Georgia, was beaten by a student one day after discussing the student's poor performance with her parents. The school district also changed their discipline, uh, discipline policies this year to be more lax and have, and have reportedly seen a 31% increase in students involved in fights. Yeah. This is that low expectation uh, racism I was talking about. No, no, no. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Get off my brother. Get off my brother. Get off my brother. Get off my brother. Don't touch my brother, bro. You should have had a fucking handle on your brother then. You should be, a, a, I don't know if she's a big sister or not, but you should have been a good sibling and told him to calm the fuck down and get his shit. Why aren't you helping your fucking brother out? Helping get his schoolwork done? Getting his shit right? And don't tell me you don't know that he is a violent sociopath because I'm pretty sure you know that. Yeah, my brother, bro. Like, shut the fuck up. You give the game a fuck about your brother. You made sure you would make sure he wasn't pummeling a goddamn teacher, and make sure he was doing his fucking schoolwork. That's what you should. That's what you should have been worried about. Y'all go to the same damn school. It looks like. If you don't, well, you still should have been uh maybe checking in on him, making sure he's not going nuts. Oh, watch out, man. Oh, oh, but yeah, some guy defends the fucking uh, him being uh, like someone defends the teacher be, getting their ass handed to him by him and suddenly oh get my brother bro like shut the sit your stupid ass down <laughs> such sit your dumb ass down. As an educator, I am constantly worried because if you want to protect your brother, you protect him from himself. Worried if I am part of the problem. English teacher says that grammar and writing rules are based in white supremacy, so she tries to undermine it in her classroom. Basic gra grammar and writing rules are based in white what supremacy. What do I mean by that? Well, okay. public education is an institution that upholds lots of problematic systems in our society, like white supremacy and misogyny and colonization, etc. In my role as an educator, I try to undermine that BS in my classroom as much as I possibly can. I so I just tell these niggers to just stop reading. <laughs> I just tell the blacks to just stop reading because uh, reading is white supremacist. And I'm, and I'm pretty sure she thinks she's the least High racist person English she knows. And, whew, the white supremacy runs deep. What do I mean by that? Well, let's look at how we write essays. Start with an introduction that includes a thesis. Always cite your sources. Use transition words like however and therefore. These are all made up rules. They're arbitrary. They were created by Westerners in power. In linguistic justice, April Baker Bell calls this the language of respectability or the language of power. Wait, 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 let's rewind that. Let's rewind that. Linguistic justice, black language, literacy, identity, and uh, ped uh, pedagogy, ped ped <laughs> fuck it. And I didn't get that wrong because I'm black. <laughs> but yeah, anyone who says like black people just can't fucking read right, so you just gotta lower the standards for them is a fucking racist, period. Citing your sources, that's some, that's some white okay. shit. <laughs> with a unit honoring how we talk rather than. If a black person, like if a black kid in your class just fucking walked up with a, with a blank sheet, would you just give him an A plus anyway? Like what the fuck are we talking about? Are they all, if they all spelled their fucking words with the letters backwards, like a fucking third grader, you, you'd just give him an A? Like what are we doing here? What, what are we doing? What are we doing, uh, Eunice? <laughs> so this is the start of my series on teaching linguistics in high school. Day 12 of being a... Oh, hell no. <laughs> Jimmy Neutron done changed! <laughs> 
Jimmy Neutron got the surgery, guys. Biological male who went viral this year for attempting to join a sorority is now learning from Dylan Mulvaney. No, and creating TikToks, making a Bro, mockery we're gonna go buy tampons. Oh, that's <laughs> that is the fucking creepiest face. Oh. Jake Bob and Wright, he got brain blasted. <laughs> uh, if that isn't the fuck the well, face. <laughs> Where are they even at? What the? I don't know, which one should I get? Got the Tampax Pearl. Um, I think these are like little. Now keep in mind, uh, people like Dylan Mulvaney and this asshole claim they're just helping women. So you're like, but you're, how does this help women? I'm just trying to be sympathetic to women, like pretending like I don't know what the fuck tampons are and going to, oh my God, what the hell? Vagina, ew, weird. Little dots to see how much you flow is what somebody said online. I don't know, let's do an unboxing. Um, it literally has instructions. Okay, this is a tampon. Uh, this thing does not go up in. Now, you know the stereotype that uh, feminists try to, uh, try to give about men they don't know about periods they always mock us for our periods they're always like act like little children when it comes to periods well this these must be the men you talking about then <laughs> these must be the men you fucking talking about you know the men you like to hype up as uh destroying uh toxic masculinity you know the ones yeah the ones you've been fucking boosting this whole fucking time what have i told you what have i told you People who say they, who make it a, their personality and say they support women and brag about supporting women and claim that they're male feminists. what I say? What I've been saying? What the fuck I've been saying? <laughs> they're just assholes. Uh, Joey Joester, my sister liked a Dylan video. I love her, but dang. Oh God. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. You got You got to do like, that that like like what I said about that black girl in that one uh, in that last video. You gotta you gotta save her from herself, man. <laughs> uh, Iris roses, I think that's it. Wait, is it satire? I don't think I. Maybe he is. Maybe this one is. But Dylan Mulvaney is one hundred percent serious. I think. Like if he is um, doing satire of how it's very easy to, for trans people to basically move through this shit very easily in spite of how crazy they are with activism, then okay, bravo, you did a great job. <laughs> that was like, you are the new Borat. <laughs> you are the new fucking Borat. But if you're not and you're just fucking nuts, you need to be in a straitjacket. If you're 100% uh, serious about it, you need to go. You need to go. <laughs> He's got, looks like that motherfucker from the Sprouts. He's gotta go. <laughs> yeah, when Vito came, well, when Vito was discovered as gay and went, like, <laughs> one of the crew members was like, he's gotta go. <laughs> like, where does that go? Oh my God, what the hell? Okay, so it says you push the plunger up. The plunger. Oh, baby, kidding. That just hangs out inside you? How does it, where, how do you get it out? Is that what this thing's for? Duh, oh, dummy. Oh, it comes open. Oh. Oh, do you like? Oh. <laughs> Jake Bobbereth off to oven land. I never bought them before. Yeah, I need, I honestly need to bring that back. Off to oven land, motherfucker. <laughs> Whenever these motherfuckers started in there with that bullshit, just off to oven land. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Dr. Purity here, and I'm going to talk to you a bit. Professor at UC San Diego says she automatically gives all students A's because she wants to decolonize her classroom. Grading is now a form About of colonization. How to decolonize a classroom and how I decolonize my teaching. All these bitches got fucking, got fucking rags on their heads. You just don't want anyone to see your... your uh, you just don't want people to see your balding hairline. I think that's what it comes down to. That is the female version of when a guy shaves his head because they don't want he doesn't want people to see that he's balding. <laughs> so first things first, we do not grade over here. Oh wait, 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 wait. 
um, Chef B- uh, Boy R D S nuts. Will you just fucking will you chill out, fucking Judge Roy Bean? <laughs> I need to rewatch The Sopranos. Uh, okay, anyone who takes my class automatically gets an A. They're told in the first week that they're gonna get an A. The only thing that's required is. Yes, this is why we got nothing but dumbasses coming out of college because of shit like this. And I have weeks of um, excused absences built in so that if people are sick or they have family obligations, it won't affect their grade. So since I'm not grading them, I'm just giving. Yes, cat, save us from this video. Like, he's, yeah, he's getting in the frame because <laughs> he knows cats are a bigger draw. And be like, yeah, I'm, a good, I'm distracting you from all the bullshit. <laughs> Hello. Robot Chicken, uh, 670, 199 Super Chat. Uh, excuse me. Where was he planning on putting that tampon? In his dick hole. Like, where else? His dick hole. Just put it right in there. Right up his urethra. Giving them A's. Like, how do I know that they're doing anything? And how do I know that um, they're learning anything? Uh, and so I also don't give homework. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> surprise, surprise. I'm a shitty teacher. Doesn't do their job. <laughs> Surprise, surprise, I'm a drain on Western society. Ha ha. Ha ha. I'm balding at the temples. <laughs> so um, my students and I have equal part when it comes to bringing information to the table. Um, we all sit together and share what we're talking about. Uh, and they get to use their critical thinking skills to apply the things they've learned in all their other classes. Hi, you are not. Bi- the body positivity movement. Oh, we got another fat ass. Uh, the body positivity movement should be focused on dismantling the system because fat phobia is rooted in racism. Yeah, I've heard this shit before. Basically, uh, you're discriminate. This that it's the big fat mammy stereotype. Basically, like these big fat mammies were just they were so proud of their big fat mammyism. And because you don't like fatness means that you hated those big old fat mammies. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Basically, that's that's their body whole point. If you are not anti-racist, you can't be body positive if you're not anti-racist. If you want. Uh, Mackie Sky, two dollars super chat. Jay Long, Jay Long Bone, you still doing those videos like Darman? Oh, you mean uh, what the fuck is it? What's the name of that channel? Generation Hope. Hey, I'm still waiting on that third, the third part. I don't know if it was the third part. That next installment of uh the step that stepmother series. I'm waiting for that. Where is it at? <laughs> I'm not going back to Generation Hope until they post that shit. I'm not going back. I'm invested. Post that shit. I'm gonna look for it. I'm gonna look for it. I'm gonna go back to it because I haven't been to their channel in a while, but I want it posted. I want that shit out and then I'll go back. Engage in and benefit from and profit off of this space and you want it to just be about loving your rules and cellulite and stretch marks. You are at the tip of the iceberg and you've missed the entire point. Body positivity is meant for us to get at the root of the bullshit that we have been taught. And guess what? Fat phobia is very much rooted in racism. Like. I can see the cake you ate this morning. (laughs) Black women totally paved the way for us in this space here. Oh God, why you, bitch, why are you doing this? (laughs) Those mammies paved the way. (laughs) care about this stuff, now is not. Like, no, sweetie, um, if you're talking about like thick women, thick black women, like that's not the same thing. And also, uh, yeah, you're basically saying that fat mammies uh, saying that, like making fun of like like the fat mammy thing was actually something to be admired and not a fucking racist stereotype. Cause I know that's what you're talking about. I know that's exactly what the fuck you're talking about. Becky Sky, $2 super chat. Oh, you said you found, fa- oh shit. You, oh, you said you find another channel like those two. Oh, that's right, I did. Uh, yeah, but I like, I, I lost touch with it. I gotta find it again. Jack Diamond, $5 super chat. Why won't people take us seriously? Proceeds to dress and act like a clown unironically. Also love your content, King. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Jake Bob and Rice, Mega Mammy. <laughs> oh, that Mega Mammy with the Mega Mammaries. <laughs> Little King Gorilla Mamas uh, paved the way for us cracker piggies. I'm so sorry, Jalen. <laughs> but that's basically what she's saying. 
That's basically what she is saying. Jesus Christ, I hate this shit. Not the time to be silent, okay? This is not just about you learning to love your body. This is about all of us dismantling systems that make it impossible for people to just be safe in their bodies. And that means following up with action. Oh no, the transphobia in my comment section needs to stop. Yesterday oh God, don't repost the same clips. Come on guys. Reason for dating someone, keep that same energy for all the women who are infertile. For all of your your uh, love and care on my last post. Um, here's here's my update. Sorry for the delay. My life is chaos on how I clicker trained my family to get my correct pronouns now that I'm- Excuse me? Wait, wait, LGBTQ activists use a pet trainer clicker to train her family to use the correct pronouns. If they said she, they got bullied into correcting it to they. Oh my fucking God. Let's see where this goes. Trans person. Um, so first of all, a lot of people were asking what treat I was using. Um, if you don't know, for circus dogs, when they do something that we like, we click that behavior and then we give them a treat. Um, I did not use it as a positive marker like that for uh, my family because I'm not going to treat them for basic human decency. I instead used it as a negative marker. So every time they said she, I would click so that they would start to associate the click with a she in their head and would start to automatically self-correct. Um I treat my family members like dogs because I'm a self-important sociopathic bitch. Tr like this is why like no offense but this is why only white people get away with this shit like they taught their kids about individuality and being you and all this shit which is fine <laughs> but see what if you take it too far you get little bitches like this because if this were in a black family they automatically snatch it from you throw it across the room and tell you to sit your stupid ass down somewhere you'd get smacked real quick <laughs> oh so you're gonna treat me like a dog okay how about I choke chain your ass? <laughs> How about that? You get smacked real quick. I'm not saying there are no white families who wouldn't tolerate this. I'm just saying, like this is this is more common with white families. I'm just saying, <laughs> with white like suburban families, like because they, they they're all about being polite and understanding. <laughs> And I, I, I mean it in a bad way, like overly polite, overly understanding. They take it too fucking far. That's why she got to this point. Now, that's to assume she's still talking to her family and that she's actually done this. That, that's assuming that she is telling the truth, <laughs> that she's actually done this shit. But um, yeah, th this wouldn't fly in any other fucking household. It would not fly. Like, do that shit to me, bitch. The shit's gonna be snatched out of your hand and thrown across the fucking room. Or going in the toilet. That's what's gonna happen. Um, I forgot to take into account the fact that I have an auditory processing disorder and live at, like, a 15-second delay from everybody and everything else. And... Excuse me? I forgot to take into account the fact that I have an auditory processing disorder and live at like a 15 second delay from everybody and everything else. Or maybe you're just a cunt who doesn't know how to listen to people because you're self-important as shit. Like, oh, I have a disorder where I'm a bitch. <laughs> Bust nut, hello, my lady, man, these white people, eh? <laughs> uh. Red Rose Spark, my mom would definitely beat me up. Like, yeah, like... That, like, like, like a, a fucking real parent would just snatch that shit from her hand, throw it wordlessly, like, like, like get up from their fucking seat. Not, a, not a word, not a peep. Snatch it out of her fucking hand and throw it across the room, and or just throw it in the garbage. And that'd be that'd just be the end of it. Like, what the fuck? What else? What are you gonna do? You gonna fucking sue me for her, for harassment? Your own fucking mother? No, you're not gonna do that. Cause I bet you her fucking parents pay her rent. <laughs> so her heart find out the super dead. Hey Jay, did you hear the bad news that Henry Cavill won't be, come, won't be coming back as Superman? Uh, yeah, I heard about it. Yeah, I already talked about it. Ugh. Uh, Quatrina VR 199 super chat make her play fetch with that clicker. We need to bring back the belt, people. We need to bring it back. <laughs> They still haven't updated that goddamn evil foster care. Oh God, hang on, hang on. 
I know I'm looking at it while I'm looking at this. I know it's I know I should be on the ball and pay attention to this, but I wanted to I was curious and I wanted to see if there was more. Um uh, evil step mother. Fucking see. They got new videos out, Generation Hope, but like none, none about the stepmother. They kept you hanging with that fucking ugh, bastards. I'm invested. I, I, I'm invested, and they just, they just pull the rug out from under you. And so. I'm wondering when I'm here. I think it's just raining outside. Anyway. <clears throat> I wasn't able to click as much as I wanted to, so it wasn't super effective on that aspect. I think I'm gonna need a new invention that counteracts auditory processing in order to get that right. But I did explain to them what this was for and why I was doing it, and then I carabinered it to my hip. At carabinered it? <laughs> I definitely had several occasions where a family member would start to say something, look at it, pause, and then purposefully gender me correctly. And that happened at least three or four times. Yeah, I don't believe you. So, but then I also do believe you because, like I said, a lot of like white parent, like suburban white parents, are just too fucking polite with these damn kids. Someone should have smacked you a long time ago. <laughs> the unavoidable shitstorm. Uh, four ninety nine super chat. Did you see the clip of people being walked like dogs and someone walking by and and asked congressman, "Uh, what the fuck?" Uh, yeah, no, I didn't see that, and I will never see that. <laughs> Uh, Gary Thomas, five dollars super chat. You're right. Jay, white people's greatest strength and weakness is their focus on individuality. It's why this country is such a starry state now. Uh, it was effective, but not entirely. So there's my update for you. Hello. It has been a rough few days for the queer community, and so today we are going to break one of the cardinal rules of teaching to make ourselves feel better, which is spending our own money on our classrooms. People get really mad about my queer library. I have like 200 titles that are specific to the LGBT community that I've been curating for over eight years. And don't get me wrong, my students love that library. I'm sure they do. It has been very helpful for many students figuring out who they are, how to relate to their peers, for parents who are trying to better understand their kids. But this is by far the most popular thing that goes into my classroom. It's a giant dildo. It's flags. I make these available for everybody. Oftentimes teachers will take them and put them up in their classrooms. It's like those mandated posters that districts have saying that places are safe spaces. Those are helpful, but oftentimes students think that because you have to put them there, they don't know necessarily if it's an actual safe place for them. But more than that, I meet kids all the time who are really just excited to have one. Sometimes they don't feel safe enough to take them home, so they might live forever in their locker. And there are like six million flags, so I don't have all of them. But I do have like our heavy hitters. Can you iron these? Probably not. They look like a... I don't have all. There's six million flags. I know that's not a literal number, but like the, the fact that there's so many fucking flags. To cover every like basic personality trait that's been turned into a gender or a sexuality. Just ugh. But the fact that cheap plastic flags are like the most popular thing in my queer library shows that the content really isn't the point for a lot of these kids. It's just feeling seen at all, acknowledged, loved, respected where they are every day. When word gets around that I've had a new shipment in, I'll meet students that I've never seen before. And for a lot of them, it's the first brave step toward making community with other students that will make the rest of high school a lot more survivable. I really wanted to come on here and talk about my gender. Flags will... Ugh. Flags just make life more survi survivable. And see if... Incredibly sad. They're intentionally confusing young people like this about their identity. Anyone... And talk about my gender. I'm a non-binary man. Uh, you can't like that's contradictory. That's contradictory. See if anyone, I'm non-binary. I'm non-binary, but I still follow the fucking binary. Um, huh? In my little phone, has the same experience or a similar experience or can relate in any way? Because I very recently discovered by very recently, I mean like this very morning, that I am a non-binary man. Which I know sounds like an impossible hypocrisy, paradox, contradiction. No! No! You're crazy! 
crazy. <laughs> Hypocritical. Gender theory? <laughs> I'm gonna explain. Also, I'm not a- Not hypocrite. Oh my god. Uh, I, oh my god. I meant contradictory. Fuck. I accidentally said hypocritical. But yeah, gender theory, contradictory. Uh, no. I'm not a masculine aligned non binary person. I am a non binary man because I'm non binary and I am a man. No, you're clearly a teenage girl. Like, stop so the cap. I like <laughs> believe that gender is performative, socially constructed. Like, clearly, with that fucking fake mustache you're trying to perpetrate. <laughs> <laughs> Unless that's a shadow, but I don't think it's a shadow because the closer, uh, the closer she gets to the fucking camera, it doesn't like the 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 lighting doesn't change. So, like you try to put like a fucking fake ass skid mark mustache over. Oh god, this is so sad. And that we don't need it. Saying that, I'm not really pro abolition of gender, unless it would come even kind of stages i'm not sure i haven't really thought about the abolition of gender as a whole but i think that the world would be a better place if we had never constructed gender you just called yourself a fucking man you idiots <laughs> if we never constructed gender but see if we never constructed gender there would be no such thing as non-binary because how we like gender theory created the whole non-binary thing so if there was no gender f to begin with, you would not be on fucking TikTok acting like a fucking try-hard idi idiot. Idiot. <laughs> we should abolish gender, even though I call myself a man. I haven't really thought this through. The hair dye I use seeped into my brain. I'm, <laughs> I'm losing conscious very quickly. <laughs> Saying that, the only thing that's hindering me from being completely free of the influence of gender gender roles, expectations, norms, etc., etc., is my gender dysphoria. The aim of my medical transition- Wait, hey, hey, why not? The influence of gender. The only thing that's hindering me from being completely free of the influence of gender, gender roles, expectations, norms, etc., etc., is my gender dysphoria. So your gender dysphoria is telling you to be a fucking girl, which you are, and you're trying to your gender dysphoria is telling you to be a girl and you're trying and you think going like going the opposite direction is helping your gender dysphoria. Are you fucking oh this kid is a fucking moron. My gender dysphoria is telling my female body, my female brain to be female. That means I have gender dysphoria. Like no you moron, you idiot. <laughs> oh, where are, are her fucking parents? They need to be slapped too. Are you out of your damn mind? Like these parents just don't give a fuck. They're not like they should be like scrolling their kids TikTok looking at what the fuck they're posting. Seriously. At least follow them in secret. You know what I mean? Like she's lit. She literally thinks that her gender dysphoria, that she has gender dysphoria because she's a girl and her brain is telling her that she's a girl. <laughs> Oh, what the fuck? The aim of my medical transition is not only to free myself of my dysphoria, but to... This, you know, this reminds me, it reminds me of some, like, th that story on Twitter, I think. Uh, I think it was. Where someone said, oh, um, that her sister just discovered that her thoughts was not schizophrenia, but, like, they were just thoughts. Like, she actually thought that she was hearing voices when she was really just thinking. <laughs> Like, if people on the internet are that fucking stupid, then they can be that fucking stupid to be tricked into being trans. Entirely liberate myself from the grips that gender has on me in all respects. And I think it's very likely that a lot of people see medical transition and transitioning as a whole as the opposite of that and as a way to, like, conform to and comply with. No, people see it as a mental illness. Uh... <laughs> That's what it is. Not applicable two dollar super chat or a sign of mental illness. Sorry, uh, not applicable two dollar super chat. I preach. I love you so much, Jay. All oh, thank you, thank you. I think someone in the chat said I missed the nineties. Yeah, Ari said I missed the nineties. Me too. Oh, uh, gas was cheap. Shit was simple. God damn. I mean, not to say we didn't have problems, but they weren't this big and you know awful. Because <laughs> every every nation's gonna have problems. 
Every generation had problems. It's just the magnitude of problems. And I think that generation right in there, we had the least problems. Again, the binary. But that's just not how I see my transition at all. And I always want to be perceived as a man. Like, I am a man and I have lots of dysphoria surrounding the idea that I might not be perceived as a man. See, my girl body is telling me that I'm a girl and not a man. That means I have gender dysphoria. I just can't get over that leap in logic. I just can't. Uh, wow. Wow. <laughs> However, I don't want to be confined to that one label. And I think that the way I see my transition and the way that I'm seeking. Like your self-importance and your ignorance is is making you non-binary. Like that just tells you right there. Like a lot of these kids are just fucking dumb and confused. <laughs> And if they're so dumb, like if one person is so dumb that they trick themselves into being trans, like no, like that, that this could be any kid. It could be any fucking kid. Come on. And there are like activists on Twitter or wherever who will say, this shit isn't happening. No one could be tricked into being trans. Well, this bitch. <laughs> she tricked herself into being trans. Jesus Christ. Where are these damn parents? Like, what are you doing? Like. You've accomplished nothing as parents. This is where the kid ends up. Freedom and liberation from gender is what makes- Like you you tricked yourself into being, into being non-binary because you don't, because you want to be, a, you think you're a man and you think that your girl brain telling you to be a girl is just gender dysphoria. Makes me non-binary <laughs> as well as a man. So imagine our frustration when- Okay, wait. A New Jersey high school recently held a drag show during school where students performed uh, for select staff to watch. Outraged parents showed up to the board meeting last week and blasted the school. More on the story uh, coming Classes were soon. given to selected students on October 27th to leave our class at 1.30 to participate in the school-sponsored drag show. Instead of our students being engaged in academic time, they were applying makeup and changing into their drag costumes. This was a loss of over 30 minutes of instructional time for these students. One of the invited spectators for the drag show was Phoebe Mantrap. A One of you motherfuckers got your phone on. From our perspective, it does not seem fair and equitable that Hunter and Central students were not able to celebrate with their peers, but a professional drag queen from outside the Hunter and Central community was allowed. Furthermore, based on the chatter that we have heard amongst the students in our classrooms, Dr. Moore's decision has created significant confusion, division, and resentment between students. Well, it looks like we've put a whole new meaning to the word adult t entertainment here, haven't we? Uh, um, Mouseketeer627, $5 Super Chat. Yes, I caught you live. Love you and Carl's interview with the vampire reactions. Keep them coming. We will. But yeah, I need to record some uh, some She-Hulk reactions first. I, I need to, oof. I'm way behind on that. We Board of Ed. Adult entertainment used to mean adults going to strip clubs, watching other adults engage in sexual behavior. Well now, thanks to this board, we see adult entertainment as a bunch of high school staff watching young children for their entertainment. Oh and to mm. those of you who still retain your... Oh, come on. Why don't you keep... Like, I wanted to hear what was coming of the, all that jeering. Come on. Those days are numbered because we will continue to expose the evil that you're doing in secret and behind closed doors. Just the fact that you have to hide this garbage tells us how evil it is. In the meantime, while you guys still temporarily hold these seats, remember we are looking at all avenues of holding you accountable for these actions. And I believe that the reason for the educational uh, deterioration in America is a preoccupation with ideology and sexuality at the expense of academia. Um, you yeah. take this drag queen performance <laughs> as an example. Not only were students taken out of the class to prepare for the performance, but they would have been unable to focus on their studies in any class during the day while their minds were preoccupied imagining about this performance. The I honestly, I think this, this is because like a lot of fag hags run these fucking schools nowadays. Because you look at these fucking boards, it's mostly fucking women and y'all ain't like stepping in to stop this shit. 
like these women like to portray themselves as like the most nurturing, the most protective of children, the most rational. And y'all ain't stepping in to stop this shit. What the fuck? So y'all got it. Y'all are probably those fucking desperate suburban fag hags who wanted to hang out with gays and get, didn't get the chance. So you invite them to your fucking school. To, and have children dance around for you, which is really fucking creepy, by the way. It reminds me of that fucking scene from, uh, what was it? From Blade. Remember that scene from Blade? Where those like little girls, I presume they were little girls, in fucking uh, short skirts and shit, dancing for uh, old billionaires and shit. Remember when that wasn't okay? <laughs> Remember when that, was, that was, shit was portrayed as being creepy? It's not really creepy anymore, apparently, according to certain school boards. The question is, is this an academic institution or is this an ideological institution? If I were to identify... <laughs> if I were to identify as an elephant or wanted to change into an elephant, that would be okay if I was a toddler. But as an adult, a real academic institution would teach me that it was scientifically and biologically impossible. It would, in fact, be a mental disorder, and I should be referred to for psychiatric help. Because in reality, a drag queen performance is sexually grooming children, and that's unacceptable in this community. Mm -hmm. As a school board, you should recognize how divisive some of you are in, in this community by promoting this exclusive uh, sexual ideology. I'm here tonight because I'm concerned about this inappropriate story that was read to my daughter's second grade class. The book is oh, titled Julian is a Mermaid, and it's a story of a little boy who is transitioning to a little girl. And I just want to remind you, my daughter is seven years old, and this is a class of second graders. So I want to be clear. My concern is the age appropriateness of this type of gender themed story for a class of second graders. I am all for and support diversity in a rich education. However, there should be boundaries However. with regards to sensitive subjects with our youngest learners. Education on changing gender for second graders should be completely off limits. And I'm looking at every single one of you because I just want to make sure that you hear me. We are talking about seven-year-old children being read a story about changing their gender. So I'm really perplexed as to why this book will be read to a class of seven-year-olds. And I'm also so curious, why would adults broach this topic with children? No answers, of course. And also, if this is the path the school wishes to take with the social and emotional learning, because that's the guise that they're hiding this under, then we should be able to opt out. So I do have the book here with me today. So I'd love to show you all about Julian and the mermaid. And we'll quickly go, I know we have a few minutes so we don't have time for story time like we do in my daughter's class. But here you can see, <laughs> so you all can see Julian. He's using her passive aggressive white woman powers for good instead of evil. Little boy, as he strips down to his underwear and then grows hair as he's transitioning to his new life. Again, this is going to a group of seven year olds. And then we have Julian again, stripping down to his underwear, making himself a wig, putting on makeup, lipstick, and then. He wraps a curtain around his waist with only his underwear to then be marched in a parade with a bunch of adults. So here is the book that's being shared with a bunch of seven-year-olds. This book clearly promotes gender ideas. Ms. Watros, you're almost at time. The book clearly promotes cross-gender ideas that is inappropriate for a group of second graders yeah. and also the inappropriateness of the much. boy in his underwear. Thank you for your time this evening. And I hope that you all really consider what we're sharing with our youngest learners. Like notice how it's always fucking women in these in these in these school board meetings. It's almost always head by women. <laughs> I'm just saying these are the same. I think these these are just like sub, bored suburban women who want to be around gay people, 
and to, and want to be seen as inclusive and then they're just ruining the shit. <laughs> I'm not saying it's all uh, female board members doing this shit, but like, how how come it's always a fucking room full of female board members? The fuck? It's just fucking weird to me. Oh, D transitioner who was approved for his cross sex hormones after just two counseling sessions blasts doctors for transitioning minors. My issue with this is that they're allowing these things to happen to children. They can't make these decisions. They're okay. My children. My name is Maddie, and I sound like a dude but I'm not. Um, see, so I transitioned for a few years and I've been off hormones slash detransitioning for a couple of years. Here's the deal. When I went to transition, I had to go to counseling to get a letter of, so, re letter of referral to a doctor. The doctor wouldn't see me without that, but I only had to go to like two sessions before this, uh, counselor was like yeah you have gender dysphoria let's you need to be treated by a doctor let's get you this note she wrote me the letter of recommendation i took it to a, do a doctor and this doctor prescribed me testosterone on the first visit now i'm not crying and blaming them for my decisions because i was a legal adult i was a i was a legal adult when i made these decisions i knew that my voice would be permanently altered I knew that I would permanently grow facial hair, which I still do. You can't really see it right now because I pluck my face. Literally, these tweezers are in my car all the time because on my brakes, I pluck my face. Anyways, um, I was a legal adult when I made these decisions, but now my issue with this is that they're allowing these things to happen to children. Children who can't drive. Children who are not old enough to buy alcohol because their brains aren't, like, they're not mature enough to do that. Kids who aren't mature enough to apparently buy nicotine, according to the law. Like, they can't buy nicotine, they can't get it, they can't get a tattoo without parental consent because that's a permanent thing on your body that you don't, like you, mentally you don't understand that it's going to be forever. Like, <laughs> and here's the thing, if this would have been as much of a push, like for the transgender issue whenever I was a kid, I would have been one of those kids. I would have been on, cause I didn't know what transgender was whenever I was that age. But if I would have, I would have been on puberty blockers because I did not feel like a girl. I felt like a boy. I did all the boy things. I did not feel like I was supposed to be a girl. I never pictured myself as a woman. Like in, like at my wedding day, I pictured myself as the guy. I never pictured myself as a mom. I pictured myself as the dad. Like as a kid, as a kid doing pl like playtime or whatever, I would either be the dad in the situation or I would be the depressed, uh, depressed daughter right which it was sad anyways um but i can't get over this like they're they they can not make these decisions folks guys they can't they're babies they're children they can't drive they can't smoke they can't drink they can't like they can't get a tattoo like this is insane why are we allowing this to happen to children i would have been so much further along in my transition before like if I would have started that young and I, I'm detransitioning so that would not have worked out the way that I thought it would work out whenever I was that age. We're talking about how my son is possibly being groomed by his teacher and I wanted to expand on a couple of things. It's not just that this teacher took my son out to eat in his personal vehicle after school hours and did Oh, what the fuck? Wait, Oklahoma mom claims her son is being groomed by a teacher. The teacher allegedly forces her kid to eat lunch with him in school and took him to a restaurant without asking. She also, yeah, oh, it was, <laughs> if that was my mom, that motherfucker would be dead by now. She also claims her son is acting different now and feels unsafe. Uh, school hasn't permission. done anything. He also told my son if he didn't start eating with him in his room during lunch, that he would be removed from the play. What the fuck? And it's like, is this a man man or is it like, what's going on? Cause like, how the fuck are you? Like, usually, like, like I said, people usually, if, especially if it's a man involved being creepy with kids, people take, usually take that shit seriously from jump. Like how, how have, has the school not done anything? He told my son it? after we reported this, that he would apologize to my son if he would start eating with him again in his classroom what so there is some quid pro quo going on and the biggest thing for me is how my son is reacting to all this
Something about this situation is upsetting my son deeply. He felt unsafe and for Yeah, he's probably already molested your kid or he's about to. That's enough reason for the school to investigate it instead of blowing him off, threatening him and actively punishing him. If the school stays silent on this, they're complicit. This first clip is him talking to my son in class in front of all the other students. Mm -hmm. So let's get this straight. Since you're too cowardly to stay on the phone with me, but you were brave enough to call me and start this, let me tell you how this goes. And that was the start of a minute and a half ranting voicemail that happened when this teacher called us back, me and my mom. And we only had this guy's phone number because he had given it to my son, my minor son. A lot of that recording has my son's name. It has names of other teachers in it. So I cannot share the whole thing. Longer welcome to be part of this production. And he will be removed out of the six hour class. Through most of the voicemail, he's attacking us, thinking that we're calling him because Charlie didn't get a certain role in this school play that this choir teacher is directing. That was not why we were calling him. We were calling him to know why our minor son was in his personal vehicle and went to Panera Bread with him, and then he brought them home without ever getting our permission. But he hung up on us, he called back, and that's what he thought, and he threatens my son with being removed from the play. The reason I told you to grow a brain is because on what planet do you think that was appropriate for you to call? So we took that full voicemail and we took the recordings that my son made, um, a video that my son made, some text messages between the two of them to the principal's office. The principal called my son into his office yesterday and said, you are removed from the school play and don't ever record a teacher without their permission or their knowledge. Uh-uh, fuck that. See, you're being too nice. <laughs> Let's go to the school and light them up. Like, I remember teachers, like, cause fucking parents at my school and, uh, parents, uh, involved in the schools I went to just went and went there and started screaming. <laughs> like, if y'all don't do some shit, uh, the law is going to be involved and lawyers are going to be involved. If, like, what if, uh, if one of, if somebody's kid was being mistreated, there would always be a mom. You would always hear him in the fucking hallways screaming. <laughs> They like you gotta get in that you gotta get in that motherfucker and start screaming. <laughs> Fuck this boardroom shit. Go in there with your cell phone if you gotta. And it's getting there for like look, I'm telling you right fucking now if you don't do something about this shit. The law's gonna look the law's gonna be fucked. No, fuck it. Call the cops and tell them to come down there with you. Like parents used to get, sometimes you need that, that ghetto parent energy. <laughs> sometimes you need that again. shit. So I think the bigger issue here is that a grown man is taking a minor child in his personal vehicle and the school has nothing to say about that. Now, one small update. I did hear back from the superintendent and they let me know that they're investigating it. So we'll see how things go. But I just want to say it should not be this difficult for any parent to confront someone that they are concerned about, especially if it concerns grooming, coercion, or quid pro quo. And if a student comes forward and is punished by the school, my son asked the principal, he said, why am I being punished for this? Then you're preventing students from getting help in the future. That now, here's what I'm thinking is going on. Probably he wants the kid to be in uh like or pr probably the kid wants to be in some kind of play or whatever and then the teacher trying to take advantage was like uh, t t trying to take advantage was probably like of course like giving him a lot of attention taking him places whatnot and then probably he was going to hit him with something like all right i'll let you be in the play if you blow me and then he probably has proper like allegedly like if this if this is if this is some real shit they pro like uh he probably did tell the kid that and that's probably what prob probably what made the kid uncomfortable the proposition probably did happen and that's why the kid's uncomfortable with the situation he's probably trying to ask for sexual favors in exchange 
in in exchange for being in a damn play. That's my theory. Like the, the, the voice messages are a little flimsy, but like the fact that he took this kid in his own personal vehicle to another area without the, t- without the parent knowing is bad enough. And uh, he deserves a foot up his ass for that, like regardless. So, and it, like, and it does sound like some grooming shit, but like, 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 okay. Like she couldn't release all the audio files, but like, yeah, you gotta come, you gotta come better with like, you gotta stop with, stop with this polite shit. Stop it. We can't release all the names. We'll bleep them out in the recording. Bleep them the fuck out. Mackie Sky, $2 super chat. I want more videos. Wait, for me or from this person? <laughs> I, don't get, I don't know. Morgan, Rebecca, Jay Longbone, my video, my birth show. Oh my God. Jay Longbone, my birthday was a few days ago. Uh, I love you. You're awesome. Thank you. And happy birthday. Uh, Aerith Roses. Yep. Major red flag. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, my, yeah, my mother wouldn't tolerate that shit. As soon as she heard about a grown ass man taking me to a fucking restaurant in his car alone without telling her (laughs) that you have no idea. Like mothers in the nineties, especially black mothers in the nineties. Like don't fucking play. Don't, don't do. See, people are just too fucking nice now. And that's a part of that whole, that whole woke shit. Like people are too fucking nice (laughs) to people. Or too cowardly, like, yeah, oh, I can't release that audio because there's, like, there's names of people. Then bleep them out. Release the whole fucking thing on TikTok. Light these motherfuckers up. Stop with that nice bullshit. Unless you got, like, lawyers involved. I don't see why the hell you're being, uh, why you're only putting out, like, little fragments. Release the whole shit. Oh, Mackie Sky Jail. I mean, from you tonight. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, Gene uh, Bartkus, I think. Uh, sup, Jay Longbow? What's up? Mm. Mars, it's not that they're nice, they're just weak. I mean, I know, yeah, I know what you're saying, but it's like, for them, it's niceness. For them. They think they're being um, courteous to other people and that they're being, yeah, like I said, they're just being courteous. And I'm like, no. Because, like, Americans... Uh, no offense. Like we got this thing about like being polite to people and like, like we got, we have to be courteous and accepting to everybody. It's like, that's what it's just gotten worse nowadays. Like, yeah, they think it's being nice, but it's really being weak. Like, like fucking like nut up. Who gives a fuck that some names might get released for one thing. Like I said, go in a video editor and bleep or an audio editor and bleep the fucking names out and release the shit, the whole shit anyway. Or just release the whole audio regardless of whether the names are bleeped or not. Your kid's probably being molested by a fucking pedophile right now. And or being inappropriate kid. And like not to mention, like, it's not it could not just stop at your kid. It could be other kids too. You gotta think about that too. Like, come on, stop it. <laughs> like I said, who knows? She could be fabricating shit because like I don't I understand why you're not releasing the whole fucking thing. And not and why you're just releasing just fragments of the conversation. I don't know, but yeah, there's something definitely going on. If that shit's true, this is something de- like yeah, he needs a foot up his ass immediately. Wait, right, imagine walking into your kid, child's classroom and you see this. What do you do? They them mx. Uh, it's backwards. So yeah, it's okay. It's mx mix and they them, which I don't understand what the fuck mix means. Oh, excuse me. Like I said, this is just a cl- this is a red f- red flag for me. I am I am unable to trust anyone who looks like this. Sorry. You know how some like like how some people will put their window up if if a, like a black person <laughs> walk past walks past their car. I'll put my fucking window window up if I see somebody like this. <laughs> Like, no, you're probably insane. Like you try to, you're trying to look a, a way too approachable. You're trying to look way too approachable and colorful and happy. Like, I don't know. Fuck you. I am starting year six of teaching today. Super excited. So for me, gender is complicated. This person doesn't identify as human, but as inanimate object. So it uses its, it, its pronouns. Uh, do you feel comf- comfortable discussing your pronouns? I'm gender fluid and have been considering it, 
but Google isn't always helpful for neo pronouns. Yeah, because even Google's like, get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Because I would rather not be associated with it to the point where I would rather not be a human or even an animal. I would like to be an inanimate object. That sounds like depression. <laughs> so, it, it's pronouns, but nobody uses them for me. I just have them in my bio. Nobody's comfortable with them. But I would like people to use them because that further removes me from the gender binary to the point where I am just an object. Just a piece of grass. Oh, this, uh, this woman wants to be an object, guys. <laughs> uh, I have a question. Are you a feminist, sweetie? <laughs> uh, so, I would just like to not be a human being. Um, let alone have a gender. Here we have another veteran teacher who's insisting. These are teaching your kids. I teach uh, and say boys and girls. After all, that's what we are, boys and girls. We are going crazy with this whole thing. Uh, okay, someone's giving her the business. Here we have another veteran teacher who's insisting on the use of boys and girls. In Yes, bitch. Why is it so necessary to constantly remind kids of the gender binary with norms that we as a society literally made up? What? Made up? Are you fucking... We made it up. Yeah, there's a lot of things that are factually correct that we... Or, or like, that fit with something that we just made up. <laughs> like calling a uterus a uterus? <laughs> Why, like XY uh, chromosomes versus uh, XX chromosomes. There's a reason why we call it. The reason why we call a watch a watch is because we are watching the time, dummy. <laughs> like, but see, the same thing could be said about your bullshit. Why do you constantly need to remind kids about neo pronouns and gender fluidity and all this bullshit? Why do you need like, uh, why do we need to remind people of some shit we just made up? We can say the same shit about you, you psycho. It's the same thing as saying, okay, tells and The only thing is like gender binary and all that shit is actually fucking valid. <laughs> it's actually real shit. Shorts. Okay, blondes and brunettes. Not only does it saying, okay, tells and shorts. Okay, blondes and brunettes. Because that would be fucking silly. Like, okay, kid, like people, mostly people just say, hey, kids. Like, yeah, people do say boys and girls and shit, but like, yeah, people usually just say, hey, kids. But yeah, saying, hey, blacks and whites, that would be, <laughs> yeah, that would be kind of racist. That would be fucking weird. But classifying people in a boy and girl, that's actually, that's, that's reasonable. Who cares? At, because that's normal, like like separating, like hey, blacks and whites and Mexicans and that one Asian kid. Uh, what? Are we <laughs> but say boys and girls is fine because that that's yeah, that's normal. That's that's just normal. Not only does it divide the blondes from the brunettes, but it also leaves out the redheads. Statistically, red. There's nothing like, yeah, and the fact that there are, there are only boys and girls. So it's pretty fucking easy to say, hey, boys and girls, because they're only boys and girls. There ain't no such fucking thing as in betweenies. <laughs> ain't those, or nannies, or whatever. There's no such thing as that. It's not a thing. It's never, it's never gonna be a thing. It's never gonna be a real, biological, valid fucking thing. It's not a thing. Redheads are pretty rare. But they you're leaving out all the, what she's really saying is you're leaving out all the, all the all, you're leaving out all the depressed kids fuck them <laughs> you're not suddenly another gender because you're sad today biologically also your eyes are scary like how all these motherfuckers got scary socially eyes. emotionally even if you don't like redheads or you've never met a redhead too uh, what the fuck? Uh, Chef Boy R D S nuts. I goodbye. Good night, y'all. Good night, Chef Boy R D S nuts. <laughs> I'm never gonna get over that name. Um. Uh, oh, snakes. Have a good one, Jay and Chat. This is this shit is upsetting my white patriarchal ass. Also, it's bedtime. Peace, peace. And leaves out intersex children. I mean, the stream is technically almost over anyway. I think after this video, I'll be through because it's almost midnight. It's all, oh, damn, it's 10 minutes to midnight, shit. But like after this video, this will be our last video for the night. Just like, you know. children and transgender children.
It is disrespectful. Nah, no, not for one thing transgender children are either male or female as well even though they're transitioning they're transitioning to either male or female so they're still male or female also non-binary like i said not a thing not a thing not a thing not a thing it is hateful and it invalidates another human's personhood i just had a really cute moment with my uh you don't invalidate personhood by invalidating gender because gender cats dogs insects they all have gender, so not inval not validating someone's gender is not invalidating their personhood, because gender is not inherently uh, exclusive to being a person. Dummy. <laughs> Zigzag trans children do not exist. You got to go through puberty before you have a gender. I mean, well, even if you don't go through puberty, you still have a gender. I mean or a sex, whatever. But yeah, it's not a thing because they can't fucking transition at that age anyway. So yeah, not a thing. Students, and it was a great uh, learning moment. Not. If any of you teachers are using the program ST Math this year, you might know their mascot, Gigi. But as an incentive, my school has this little Gigi stuffed animal and any grade that has the most ST Math lessons passed gets to have Gigi and host her for the week. My class got the opportunity to have Gigi, and that was really exciting. But there was a learning moment. Like, all right, what, what, what trauma have you experienced over a fucking cartoon penguin? Just give it to me. Give it to me. <laughs> what is the? What has this patriarchal patriarchal penguin piece of shit done to you? Students asked me, "Is Gigi a she or is it a he?" And I said, "I don't know." One of the students said, well, maybe they're non-binary. And I had a student say, well, let's just look between Gigi's legs. And I said, well, we don't know a person's gender by looking between their legs. Yes, we and then do. And my student was like... 99.999999% of the time. Oh, yeah, yes, that's right. So we decided to call Gigi they, them. It's moments like these that remind me why I got... No, I think what happened was is maybe a kid did ask if it was a boy or a girl and you were like, um, you don't know if they're a boy or a girl. We're calling them they, them now. <laughs> if that actually happened. If it actually fucking happened. Got into teaching, these small moments can make such a big difference to kids' lives and I'm honored that I get to have- It can make such a big difference to kids' lives. They'll be depressed and cutting up their body parts in a few years. Like, it's such a difference. It's not a good difference. <laughs> I know you know nothing about genderless parenting, but genderless parenting. Yeah, stop talking like that. <laughs> this trans parent is raising her child gender neutral, so the kid can choose gen uh, gender, and he's hoping he ends up being transgender. Yeah, because that's what it's all about. When you when these motherfuckers raise their kids genderless, is because they want them to be transgender. They secretly want that shit. They don't want them to be straight. Come on. Otherwise, you just raise them the way they are. Come on. Homie has a point. Your kid should pick. You gonna force them to eat a certain thing just because you like to eat it? Why isn't up parenting but, uh, skills? That's literally the whole point. Is they get to pick. Um. They're no. They're not picking. You're picking for them. Because last time I checked, uh, non-binary or genderless knowledge was also a gender. So you are picking their gender. Stop trying to. Don't try to fucking. <laughs> don't try to. Uh. Move the goalposts now. Oh no, we want them to choose their own gender. Even though non-binary, gender fluid, all that shit is a is a fucking gender. You're you are picking their gender. Stop it with the bullshit. Stop That's it. That's why we use all pronouns instead of just neutral pronouns. Also, I'd take your kids away from you just from your voice alone. Like, what the fuck are you on? What downers are you so taking? So they can experience all pronouns. Your eyes are dead, like another fucking dead-eyed motherfucker. Oh, no. And how it makes them feel, so that when you are literally on something, what do you want? What the fuck are you on? I, because looking at this person, I didn't think they were a parent. I thought they were a kid. And plus that, and plus your 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 sluggish state is like, yeah. Mm. When they get I'm worried. To I'm the worried. Age like around three they can tell me what they prefer but see around that age they won't tell you 
And that's the whole plan. <laughs> but you, yeah, you already know that shit, don't you? They're not going to tell you that shit. Uh, well, unless you tell, you tell them. See, as long as you confuse them with enough bullshit, they're going to say whatever the fuck you want them to say. But like I said, that's the plan. <laughs> I have a four-year-old. I have done this with more than just one child. He is fine. Oh, I thought you were raising him genderless. You just, you just gendered him. Ah, go whip yourself. Flog yourself for such an, <laughs> flog yourself for such, such an indiscretion. You gendered your own child. They're not gonna get bullied because. because they yes, they will. Not, maybe not at this age, but they will. Before they go to school. That's literally the whole point is they get to pick. And it's not really like a pick because it's who they are not a choice or a decision it's who they are but i'm not going to abide by who they are until i like i said i flood their mind with enough uh confusing bullshit uh to like to uh to influence their answer it's who they are but i'm not going to raise them as who they are not until i hear the hear the answer it's i want to who hear who they are <laughs> that's literally the whole point it's the whole point. I'm so fucking high right now. <laughs> the whole point. It would be me talking to my four year old about gender. I think it's the same person. Gender and me low key hoping for a trans kiddo as a trans parent. Jesus Christ. I want them to be mentally ill. Yay. We can go to the same gender doctor together. Twinsies. When we cut ourselves, we can we can compare wounds. It'll be so awesome. Oh my god! When we get our um, when we get our gender surgery, we can like sit, we can lie next to each other in horrible pain. Maybe our screams will be like in sync with each other. Oh my god! When we're both barren and can't have children anymore. Oh my god! We can we can put our stuff bellies up against each other and be like, oh, it's a hole. <laughs> we can put them together. We can put them together. And say, oh no, there's nothing there. Oh, <laughs> so oh you're awful. Awesome. It would we usually want more for our children, but like these motherfuckers want them to be carbon copies of uh, like they want them to have the same problems as they do. That's really fucked up. Be so cool. Y'all, so Hank Green said to make a uh, channel intro video. So here. Online teacher dresses up in drag to teach kids because it's important to see uh, visibly queer teachers. Why do you have to be visibly queer? Like I, we can already tell by the way you speak that you're it's, you're not straight. I mean, come on. They can tell by the way you speak, nigga. Hi, I'm Mr. K and I'm a music teacher on OutSchool. I teach all age ranges from three years old to 18 years old. And I focus on all different aspects of music, how to make it, how to enjoy it. What Opal pal, that's like side. hoping your kid has you Down syndrome. It's a sickness. Half this yeah. Hi. I miss B and I Um <laughs> Hi, I miss Let's rewind. Oh god, your eyes are glued shut. <laughs> I miss B and I'm the drag queen drawn out. Yeah, you can barely see his eyes! What the fuck? Y'all need to cut it out with these big ass uh, eye eyelashes. Stop it! You're gluing your fucking eyes shut! <laughs> Hi, I'm Miss B. It Oh shit! <laughs> Going blind. <laughs> cool. Most of my classes are for learners ages three through nine. I mostly teach music and story time, where we read a couple picture books and sing. Yeah, these people—they have no fucking friends. They have no fucking friends. No, no outlets as adults. They—they they don't know how to express themselves by themselves. They need children to see them being their authentic self because they're so fucking alone. <laughs> they're so alone. It'd be sad if it wasn't funny. Some songs about the stories we read. And I also teach some music classes like Miss B's Musical Adventure. So I get asked a lot, why be a drag queen music teacher? Why not just be a music teacher? And there's two big reasons behind it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, Caesar Augustus, J. Longbone, can you do your best ABBA and Priest impression? <laughs> this is a sickness. <laughs> this is a sickness. <laughs> yeah. I hope that I hope that was good enough. Shit. Kind of. Number one, drag is fun, and learning should be fun. And so much of our current education system has completely taken that out of the equation. Second, 
Yeah, because you're too busy teaching children how to do drag instead of actually being a fun teacher. Because let's be fucking honest, uh, that's not fun for everybody. That's not how, what every every kid considers fun. No matter how much you want to try to paint it like it is, it's not. Some little boys don't want to dress up like little like girls, so they wouldn't find that fun. So, so like some of the kids that you do this around are probably just weirded out by you and make fun of you behind your back. I, I can guarantee you that. Oh my god, did you see his fucking eyes? They're so squinty. It's like they glued his eyes shut. He's a fucking loser, man. <laughs> He's got to look like a girl so he can excuse being fat because <laughs> he, he just can't cut it as a fat man. So he became a fat woman. What a, what an idiot. <laughs> Second reason is because I didn't have queer teachers growing up. I didn't have queer teachers. I didn't have queer professors. I didn't have queer professionals in my life because they were all dead, largely ignored by the government and the society that they were supposed to be a part of. I want to make sure that the generations that are coming up i didn't have queer teachers and then i ended up being gay anyway okay. <laughs> visibly queer teachers in a professional space so that they know that being queer and being whatever is absolutely okay thanks for watching make sure to follow bye as previously reported the nea has been distributing safe space badges to teachers across the country <gasps> oh, excuse me yeah, because that's what we need when we have school shootings. Pussy ass teachers. <laughs> Pussy ass teachers. Uh, the badge has a QR code, which led, uh, which leads students to sites containing sexually explicit and por pornographic content. Hang on a second. Let me read that again. <laughs> Safe space badges to teachers across the country. Is the NEA. The badge has a QR code which leads students to sites containing sexually explicit and pornographic content. Huh. With all the stuff going on in this world, um, Florida, yeah, I'm talking about you. I have never been more proud to be a part of the teachers union here at my site in our district. Why? The president just had this delivered to my classroom. We have these badges that we wear on our lanyards. If we are a safe- If she turns it around and shows the QR code, I'm gonna scan it myself and see what the fuck- person to talk <laughs> See what the to fuck that shit is. Can provide a safe space for our students. Turn it around, show the QR code. That our students, LGBTQ plus and Dodd, that they have someone or some place to go, someone to talk. The inspirational music. Shut the fuck to. up. And uh, we may not know everything. We may not have the answer, but this badge has a key. Ah, there it is. Boom. <laughs> oh, I wish I could zoom in a little bit. Hang on, hang on. Maybe I'll be able to get it. Let me let me scan this shit. Let's see what, what that's all about. Hold on, I gotta wipe my lens just in case. How do you fucking? I hate doing this. Ugh. Wait, hang on. I think my internet might be might be a little wonky. Shit. Only thing I don't like about this phone. No, what the fuck? How do you do this? I totally forgot how to do this. Shit. Oh, wait, 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 I got to switch. Mm, right. Yeah, just hold on. I got to do this shit. Ugh.
It says take the picture of the QR code thingy. Hang on, hang on. I will get this right. Damn it. This is why yeah, this is why I hate about this QR code shit. Cause sometimes it just won't work. Ugh. Wait, wait, it says you can't scan a QR code in portrait mode in video mode. Huh. Hang on a second. Well, let's see if she moves it. QR code on the back. Oh! Oh, damn it. Now it could be, um, it, pro it probably could be off because the screen is like a little, you know how it has those like uh, those uh, CRT lines? Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of got that problem. Uh, let me see though. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna get to the bottom of this. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm installing like a QR code scanner thingy. Let's see, let's see. It sucks because she's holding it at a fucking angle and that's probably fucking it up. You know, I probably gotta just take it and flip the image. Oh my God. This stream is not gonna, it's like, oh, it's gonna go on forever if I can't get this right. Oh, Jesus. Okay, I cr screen grabbed it. Now I wanna like flip it. How do I do that? I probably gotta save it first, put it on my computer and then flip it around. Like, like once I'm on a mission, I just can't, I can't let it go. <laughs> Oh boy. And the thing is I want this to end because I have to pee, but I have to do this. <laughs> I want to see if this is true. And I'll turn it around and then I'll see, let's see if we can search it. A rotate. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. Okay, I rotated it. You can't see it, but I did. <sighs> Shit. Damn it, it's not working. Come on. Hang on. Okay, wait a minute. Now I looked up the QR code. It does lead to a link from Fox News, but it's not like it's not doing what's supposed to do. It's supposed to lead to a link from the QR code itself, and it's not doing that. Oh, this fucking sucks. Okay, however, it wasn't the badge itself that agitated some, but a QR code on the back of the badge that links teachers to resources provided by an organization working with the largest teacher union in the nation and the NEA uh, National Education Association. Uh, the topic often raised the room's temperature. The website that you get uh, that you get to has very inappropriate information. Lisa Schaff. Uh, director of Ohio Parents Rights and Education said, why would a teacher need that resource, that for a resource? Even a sex education teacher providing teachers with resources that are borderline pornographic has no merit. Okay, does that, now do they provide a link to what the fuck it is? Okay. Resources. Uh, okay, now I'm looking at the site. Mm -hmm. Oh, apparently there's a book list they have. Oh, let's see. Oh shit. Oh wait, never mind. <laughs> I misread it. It says a tale of two daddies, and I misread that <laughs> as something else. Let's talk about adoption. Like, let's listen to some of these names though. Uh um, yeah, all family. Da, da, da. Uncle, uh, what is it? Uncle, what is it is coming to visit? Uh, <laughs> girls are not chicks. Sometimes the spoon runs away with the other spoon. Dumpy LaRue. A Tale of Two Daddies, like I said. Uh, Operation Marriage. Jacob's New Dress. Uh, Oliver Button is a sissy. <laughs> My princess boy losing Uncle Tim. Uh, the many files speaking out of this. Uh,
Yeah, I don't have any. Uh, I don't like have enough time to look through every book in here. But I'm trying to see. Could just read that fucking article from before. Damn it. I lost the link. Shit. Okay, no, I didn't hear it is. You know, these badges make us feel safe. Teachers Yeah, see, it's not specifying what the fuck. It's not specifying anything in the, on uh, in the article. God damn it. Then again, it is the mainstream media. They're not going to fucking specify, but come on. Someone's got to specify what the fuck is, what that QR code leads to. I mean, I saw the site that it does lead to, but what's on the site? What's that leads you have important information. Pornographic has no merit. Mm -hmm. because all i can say is that those book suggestions some of those titles sound a little suspect but uh and who knows a couple of those books are probably have probably been shown in front of a school board at one point i recognize one of the names see i'm not fucking finding yeah, see, like the, the mainstream media, like they won't fucking specify what's on what the QR code leads to, or specify the information that these kids are being led to. Oh, it's aggravating. Unless someone in chat already looked it up. <laughs> Hang on, big hello, two dollar super chat. We're gonna need the flamer, the the heavy flamer. Hold on, let me see if I missed anything else in these super chats because I was doing this for a while. Okay, yeah, I can't go past that. Oh, Glitter Gal 101 says there is an article on Go to Tutors that has a hyperlink to the QR code to the QR document. Hang on a second. Go to tutors. Okay, all right, all right, we're there, kind of. A national teachers union providing educators with links to sex instruction sites. Uh oh, here we go. Okay, sexual and Thank you. Uh, oh my god, who the fuck was that? Damn it, glitter gal. Thank you for this. Um, and more fire for bonus kind of schools. First about the QR badges. Okay. Oh, Christopher Rufo uh, tweeted this out. Exclusive. The National Teachers Union LGBT Plus Caucus has created a website and badge for public school employees that promotes a how-to guide for anal sex, bondage, rimming, domination, sadomasochism, muffing, and fisting. Jesus Christ. Uh, okay. He said that when people scan 
The NEAs provide a QR code, a list of sites pops up, including one controversial link called Queering Sex Ed. The document provided by Planned Parenthood of Toronto, oh no, offers detailed but controversial instructions. Let's take a look at it. In fact, hold on, let me, let me email this to myself and then I will open it up <laughs> so y'all can see it. Cause we, yeah, we gonna do it. We gonna do it. We gonna do this. Okay, compose. Yeah, I'm gonna email this myself because I yeah I wanna I wanna show this to everybody. Da -da. And it literally says when I email it, the title of the thing says "Sex X Final." All right, so it's sending. Come on, hurry up. I gotta pee. Okay. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, it literally says on the cover, this, it says sex acts that don't get enough play. Uh -huh. Oh, you degenerates. <laughs> Excuse me. Let's open that bitch. Wait, did I accidentally open it twice? Yeah, I think I did. All right, come on, load, damn it. Damn, I'm sorry for how long this takes. Come on, bruh. Uh-oh. Don't tell me it doesn't load. Come on. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It's coming. It's coming. I needed to reload it. That was the problem. And now they're asking me to download it, but it should still pop up, right? Come on. Oh, come on, shit. Like, I just want to get like a good, get the gist of what the fuck this says. Damn it, you know, I might have to open it up on my end and then like just, oh, God, put it over the screen. Fuck. Cause it's not opening right here. I think it might be, maybe my pop-up blocker god damn it but i'm not turning that shit off <laughs> i'm too proud or maybe hold on let me see let me see ah never mind got it got it got it i just opened it up with my browser all right it says queering sex ed sex acts that don't get enough play <laughs> There are some kinds of sex that we hear about a lot. Other kinds of sex, particularly uh, kinds of sex that queer trans people might be interested in. Don't get that. Don't get a lot of coverage. Yeah, that was worded weird. The recipe book is desi designed uh, to give you more information about some of the sex acts that we don't think get enough play. We've included a couple of blank recipe cards. If there are other things you think should be added, blah, 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 blah. And it says anal sex using toys or parts of a body in and around a person's bum. Oh, oh, look, look, look how they infantilized bum. That means they're very kid friendly. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna have to move this over. And I hate it because I, I don't really don't want to move it, but I think I'm gonna have to do it. All right, there we go. I'll just move it back later. There we go, that's enough. Um, 
So I'm gonna zoom back in. Okay, there we go. Uh, da, da, da. As long as it takes me, uh, prep time, a cook <laughs> may take, uh, may, as long as it takes, may take longer than expected. Some days are not good for anal sex. <laughs> Some days are not good for anal sex, especially after you've eaten chili. Not a good day for anal sex. Any any, any kind of Mexican food, in, in Indian food, not a good day for anal sex. Five-year-olds. <laughs> I mean, no. I think they're like middle schoolers, but still, like that's still fucked up. Yeah, middle schoolers. Like some days might not be good for you. Like when you have pizza day at your school and uh, Coach Robinson wants to do a little anal play on you after he's been grooming you for a while. Uh, yeah, it might, might not be a good day. <laughs> Ingredients, condoms, or gloves, gloves, bum lube, <laughs> or is it like bum and lube? Fingers, sex toy, penis, a shit, a shit ton of consent. Yeah, middle schoolers, a shit ton of consent will be needed. Um, substitutions, fingering, or other penetration, ew. Notes, go slow. It might take a while to get comfortable. Now, keep in mind, this was being shown to children. This, this was being shown to fucking kids. <laughs> Tenna bro, Jesse, we need to cook. <laughs> yeah, this was being shown to fucking kids. This was, there was a QR code that was gonna lead kids to this. And then they were like, oh, I, it, it's good that, like, and there was someone defending it, like, in every article, it always had that one person, like, it's good that they saw, I wish I could see, could have seen this when I was a kid. Oh, uh, I'm glad, that, I'm glad that they can see this. It's so instrumental in uh, being gay. Bondage, res uh, restraining a person's body to restrict their movements for physical and uh, psychological pleasure. Okay, but like, why do kids need to know this? Like you could make a case for anal play. Like if you're really dedicated, you could kind of make the, okay, there's some kids who might be gay who who don't, ha who don't have, like it's not the, the usual penis and, and vagina thing. And you might need to teach them about anal. It's still perverted and wrong, but you know, they might need to know that. Okay. But why do they need to know about bondage and shit? Why the fuck do they need to know about anal plugs and shit? Why is that necessary? Cause that's extra shit. That's extra shit you don't need to be taught in school or by any uh, any adult when you're that age. So so what the fuck? Ingredients, rope, ribbon, scarves, tape, belt, belts, chains, a safe word and clear boundaries, a shit ton of consent. Substitution, role play, notes. One example of safe words can be used as red, yellow, green with red meaning stop, yellow meaning slow down. Da, 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 da. Prep cooking time as long as it takes. Could be shorter than expected. Steps, get consent to uh, start simple with soft materials in knots and blah, blah, blah. rimming. <laughs> Stimulating the anus of another person using the tongue and mouth. Oh, a dental dam. <laughs> she took it. Uh, tongue bomb, like of course, dummy. <laughs> Domination, because yeah, this needs to be told to children. That this definitely needs to be told to children. They really need to learn about that. Like, yeah, domination, which is what the person who groomed you is going to do to you. <laughs> Playing with power between people in a sexual context a context taking a dominant role. Sadomasochism. Playing with giving and or receiving pain and humiliation humiliation for pleasure. Sexting. Why the fuck do kids need to know about that? They don't need to know about that. That's not instrumental in being gay, <laughs> specifically. Like, what the fuck? Fingering, muffing, muffing. Using fingers or other objects to stimulate a trans woman. <laughs> uh, to stimulate a trans woman, a MAB, male assigned at birth person internally through the inguinal canals. Ugh. The inguinal canals. Ingredients, lube, fingers, inguinal canals. Of course. Why the fuck would you list that? This, this is the ingredients for the sex act. Well, you need the genitals <laughs> first. Um, for one thing, um, when if you drill a hole into a trans woman, like they no longer have genitals. They're gone. Like putting it, like cutting off a dick and then put like, they're no more genitals. They're gone. That's not, <laughs> no. <laughs> because after you cut, cut them up, they don't work properly anymore. 
So there's no genitals. Uh, Tenebra, this is what 12 year olds need to know about. Forget math, science, vocabulary, and such. Fisting and sadomasochism with whips and chains. Whips and chains. <laughs> whips and chains. Uh, how did kids go from, <laughs> how did kids go from whips and chains to whips and chains? <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Remember when kids uh, uh, aspire to getting whips and chains? Now they're being told to use whips and chains. <laughs> How did we go? Oh God, that song is oh, it's so hilarious. How did we go from whips and, and see it? And CeeLo was, was he accused of rape too? Damn, <laughs> it's so appropriate. <laughs> How do we go from whips and chains to whips and chains? <laughs> and, uh, okay, wait. Notes the ing the ingu 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 inguinal canals, whatever, are located in any body. They're di uh, diagonally oriented tubes running in the groin area round the middle of the pelvis. You can't see them, of course. Often used when tucking among trans women. I still don't know what the fuck that is. Wait. I still don't know what the fuck that is. I'm that that's still very vague. Like what the fuck? Steps. Get consent. One. Get consent. Two. Fuck. They're located behind the scrotum and are angled diagonally outwards. What the fuck? What? Are you saying like what up up his ass? What? Start slowly, maybe with a pinky finger. The canals can be tight. Oh, <laughs> like are you like did uh, did they try to avoid like saying the ass, the anal, the anal canal? I don't get it. Okay, okay, masturbation, fisting. Oh, fisting. Oh, yeah. Because kids need to know about that. Fisting. Fucking fisting. Oh, shit. Oh. All right, let's just go back to the video. Let's finish that up. But basically, the QR code linked to that fucking shit for kids to see. And it's like, you got to be doing this deliberately. Because how the fuck do you not know you're sending kids to go to go read shit like that? Come on. You ain't, you're not that fucking stupid. So I can scan it. And the inspirational music, the inspirational fucking music caps it all off. Kids, you can stimulate the inguinal glands. <laughs> How do we go over? No, it would be awesome if they were playing whips and chains in the background. How do we go from whips and chains to whips and chains? Help. Learn. Be better. Be better at stimulating the inguinal glands. And you are creepy as so, shit, yeah. by the way. Uh, Florida, you can learn a lot. No, no, they shouldn't be learning that shit. Shut up. Fisting. Why does a fucking 12 year old need to know about us fisting? over here on the West Coast. The uh, oh, us on the West Coast. We're so woke and we're so cool because we teach fucking minors about fisting and stimulating the inguinal glands. <laughs> And teaching them about how to restrain people. And like, regardless, if you want them to have sex with other kids, which I fucking, uh, well, I, I'm sure you do. So you can imagine it. <laughs> but like, it, it, like, let's assume you want all, all the kids to fuck each other safely and consensually. Isn't it fucking dangerous to teach them about restraining other kids without going in detail about it? Like that's already, cause you're already like dumbing it down so it'll be digestible for kids. So if you're not uh. talking about it in detail, which I don't, well, you shouldn't be fucking do, doing, but I'm just saying. Since you shouldn't fucking do it, you shouldn't be te teaching them about this at all. <gasps> God damn it. Oh, Jesus. First time I had hiccups in this stream, though. That's actually pretty good. 
Because usually I have hiccups like an hour into this shit. Ah, it's not going away though. All right, all right, all right, there we go. But uh, yeah, um, you would have to go into detail about this shit to properly educate these kids, but you can't because that's, you're not supposed to be teaching this to them anyways. So you're really just setting them up to do something very dangerous. Sideburns, 1499 Super Chat. Walnuts, hey Thone, what they teaching about Linguini? <laughs> hey, hey Thone. What they teaching about linguine? Linguine? What they teaching about linguine glands? <laughs> uh, L B L, I think. You okay, Jay? Oh yeah, I'm just getting rid. Of, get, I just got was getting rid of hiccups. <laughs> These students need us. These students need us to teach them about fisting. These students need a fist up their asses. In order to in order to be more <laughs> You need a fist up your ass to be more progressive. They need us now more than ever. Oh get fucked. Oh no wait. Uh I no. In in on second thought, take that I take that back. <laughs> Would you fucking move on? You're not that important. And I'm here. If at all. And I'm proud to be here. Sometimes I'm proud to be I'm proud to no, with the lingui- I'm about to say linguini glands. <laughs> I'm proud to have stimulated linguini glands. Uh, it's society's fault that she doesn't fit in armchairs and is too big for water My slides. Will hit me up and like want to go try new restaurants, especially in the summer months, so we can just go chill on a patio, have some drinks. Um, and I always have to Google the establishments and look at their seating just to make sure that it will actually accommodate me. And most of the time it doesn't, especially booths and the patio chairs with like the little sidearm things. Last weekend, I actually went swimming with my sister and her kids and my nephew kept asking me like, Auntie, won't you go on the slide with me? And I had to explain to him that they weren't going to let me go on the slide because of my weight. Today, a TikTok creator actually unlocked a new fear for me, which is the idea of like if I was ever flying and traveling for like a vacation or something and I were to lose my luggage that I'd be totally fucked because most places like 99% of places don't carry anything large enough to fit me. Um, so I'd just be like wearing the same outfit for the entirety of my trip. Um, I've been denied. You could. Like you could just lose weight, but uh, it's probably asking too much from you. Procedures before because of my weight, I think. I've been denied medical care because of my weight. Mm, no, you haven't. You didn't hear what you wanted to hear in a, in a doctor's office, so you stormed the fuck out. They were probably like, "Yeah, uh, you probably need to lose weight in, in order to. You probably need to lose weight. That's why you're having so and so problem." And then you got pissed off Moving and then left. Moving back around to like the original video here. Um, there's plenty of things that I would like to do, but I can't because of my weight. And I think the most important takeaway here is the fact that these are things that I shouldn't be prevented from doing that I shouldn't be able to do. You're preventing yourself from doing them. Um, what the fuck? This is very much just society it's society, it's society. <laughs> like, why should I change something that's per that's changeable? The world needs to change in order to, in to cater to me, because that would be a lot easier than just going to the fucking um, gym. Not acknowledging uh, my existence, basically, and just. Well, they acknowledge your existence. <laughs> that's why you're, <laughs> you're like it's pretty hard oh, not to fat people are just kind of an afterthought so yeah oh uh, that was ugh. well it's 1240 which means like yeah we're done we're like actually 40 minutes or 20 minutes too late <laughs> we live in a society um oh god yeah that's all i can take for now
I'm dizzy. Uh, let's see. But yeah, I want to remind you guys once more that tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow, I will be, uh, I'll have, I'll have like a little, uh, national treasure watch party. Oh wait, Mackie Sky, $2 super chat, Jay Long, what channel is this? Been fun, uh, night. What channel was that? Oh God, what the fuck was his name again? Oh shit. I already forgot it. Well, you know, I'd say the channel's name earlier in the stream, so you got to rewind it because I already closed the damn tab and I don't feel like bringing it back up. But God damn it, yeah, uh, I, for I forgot his fucking name already. But yeah, I say it at the beginning of the stream, so you got to rewind it. But yeah, I just want to remind you guys again, I'll probably be doing a watch party for that new uh, National Treasure uh, D Plus show, the Disney Plus show. Um, because it looks, I saw the first few minutes and it was hilarious. Like bad green screen, bad acting, shitty dialogue. Like it's, it's all there, baby. It's all there. A legendary actor sleepwalking on camera. It is all there. And I want to experience it with all of you. It was great. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to, and I'm going to do it on Odyssey. I can't do it on YouTube. I feel like, like even with the watermark hack that I have uh, discovered, I don't think it, that would be a successful, I don't think that'd be a successful stream. So I'm gonna do it on Odyssey. Hopefully everything goes off without a hitch and, it, and everything's cool. But yeah, that's, uh, so yeah, remember that. I, I don't know what time it's gonna be tomorrow. I will let you guys know, but yeah, uh, that's, yeah, remember that so what I'm doing tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for tonight, guys. I am through. Jesus Christ, that was, that was hell. <laughs> oh yeah, and I opened up memberships. Uh, you might see like the little join button on my channel now. Uh, I don't have much going on there right now though, because it's just me here doing this shit and I don't have enough money like to make, to give someone else to, like make special emotes and shit. But anyway, like, yeah, well, memberships are opened up. You got that. Or you can like, uh, like uh, donate to PayPal or get on Subscribestar and different shit. Because yeah, yeah, YouTube's been fucking my views these days. Like all my interviews with the vampire videos, except for maybe like one, uh, is they're all yellow, except for one. But anyway, oh God. Every time I'm about to leave, I have to say something else. But like, yeah, I'm about to leave. I'm about to go. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for all like the super chats and donations, well wishes and comments and jokes. You guys are superstars for hanging out this, for lasting as long as you did with all this bullshit we had to endure. But yeah, I gotta go, I gotta pee. Goodbye and good night.